I'd like to call to order the select board meeting for September 10th, 2024. This is a hybrid meeting that is being recorded. Um, and I'll just quickly uh, go through the agenda and then we'll have a roll call to start the meeting. Uh, there's, we'll have community input, then appointments and resignations, then at 710 Veterans Celebrations Committee, uh, 735 the Friends of Center Park Agreement, 755 we're gonna discuss the safety committee, um, 820 the town administrator bylaw uh, draft review. Then at 9.10, a town clerk hiring process discussion. 9.30, one day liquor license. 9.35, the TA report. And then warrants, liaison reports, and community input. So with that, I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting and start with a roll call vote. Um, we are all present. There is nobody, no member going to be on Zoom tonight. So, uh, so we can just do a that Barney's now. Barney. We can do a voice vo voice vote. So, who wants to call to order the meeting? I'll, I'll call to order the meeting. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that okay. A new thing? Yeah. Well, I'm doing it. I, I think <laughs> it's important that we've recognized. But let's, as far as attendance, uh, Barney Arnold is absent this evening. Not just absent. At James Taylor. She is at James Taylor. I brought this, David. Help yourself. I don't have any dexterity to do that. By the end of the meeting, I will have opened it. <laughs> That's Would you like some help? It's not interference. Oh, no, the the these are these are cookies that I brought for the. Yeah. But he has these easy open. The guy who did the CDs in the old days, I think he designed this package. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So community input. Do we have any? Do we have any online? Anyone who would like to make a comment? All right, uh, seeing none, I will move on to uh, appointments and resignations. Um, we have a particularly interesting one here to start. Yeah. Do you want to, uh, hello, are you here for the select board meeting? Yes. Oh, are Come you here in. to make a public comment? Um, I'm with Scott. Oh, you're with Scott. All right, all right. Well, and hold on for just a second. Okay, hang on. Uh, all right, so all right, unless you have it pulled up. I have it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, shoot. Uh, I had it, and then I went. Here it is. There you go. I move to appoint Nathan Brown, 153 Virginia Farm Lane, as a member of the Finance Committee, term to end June 30th, 2027. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? We all know Nathan from... Glutton, glutton, glutton for, for punishment. punishment. <laughs> That's right. All right. That seems to be a trend in this town among some people, yeah. David. All right. Um, he's doing it in reverse he's order. He's going to have school board. For being board. a gluten for punishment. <laughs> gluten. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Look boy. at that. I could, Problem I mean, solver. You leave the thing in front of me, and I can't open it. It's like a kid with the M&Ms, you know. So we have, you have a motion second? I have second. a motion second. Okay, we'll do a roll, uh, not roll, a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Okay, I move okay. to a Appoint Nancy Pierce as a member of the town meeting study committee, term to end at completion of the final report. Um, Nancy is currently an associate member. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? I have a question. What is an associate member? Why do we have them? They're typically on the Zoning Board of Appeals, we have them in the event that they they have three primary members and then associate members. If the primary is missing, an associate can fill in. But typically, the primary members are the ones voting on the things. And I that's think, depending on how they set up their charter or I their bylaw. I think what happened, though, with this one was that Nancy wasn't sure she could come to all the meetings, and she asked to just be an associate I member see, right. and not have, so that, and. She was doing that so that you wouldn't have a quorum problem. Well, but they don't, right. But it works the other way, too, because she doesn't count towards the quorum either way, right? Uh, I mean, you don't count towards the quorum if you're there and you don't count. If you want to be a member, then, be, then you would have to counter as quorum. So well, now if she's a full member. She, yes. But the problem we were getting into is we were running up against not enough of a quorum. We couldn't count her. She's at every meeting. Okay. Right. That's so, why. Right. But it, I just, I want to register. We ought to think about whether we need I, associate members or not. I agree. Okay. Seems like a stupid thing, but anyway, yeah. I'm ready for the vote. All right, uh, voice vote. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Welcome, Nancy. She's done a great job, by the way. She's doing a huge amount. Right. She would. I mean, All right. you know, she's she's stuff. Um, With the Veterans and Celebrations Committee, does anyone object to starting five minutes early, or do we, no, we do that? Okay. So seeing Mr. Evans here, would you mind coming forward and speaking from the chair, introducing yourself, and then tell us about, and your yeah, colleague. Oh, sorry. She's the chair. She's the chair. All right. She's the chair of the Celebration, then. Uh, but I need to get my address? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. So, Scott Evans, 299 Hill Road. I am the chair of the Celebrations of Veterans Committee. And. Donna Vino, 8 Acton Street. I am um, on the board of the Carlisle Historical Society. And she's also a member of the Ad Hoc 250 Committee, which is the reason that we're here. Perfect. You can introduce one more here. Yes, Phil Drew. Hi there. How do you do? Good, thank you. Are Good. you on the committee as well? Yes. Perfect. Well, no, he's, no. he's the he's president right. of the Historical president. Society. Society. Okay. You're right. Philip Drew, Bedford Road, Great. Historical Great. Society. All right. So, I'd like to say that this was planned because of the subject matter of a night uh, wearing this, but I just came from a performance in Concord, so oh, okay. <laughs> it just happens to be luck, I guess. Yeah, well, it okay. adds to our All right. <laughs> feelings here. Yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that's right. All right. Um, so I did send out some material in advance. I thought I would use it as an outline so you'd have something to refer to. And if we don't mind, we'll just follow this in order. Interrupt any time, ask questions, right? This is a, should be a dialogue here. Okay, so the first one, uh, and I'm uh, following. Scott, before you jump yes. in, so we're talking about July 4th, 2025? No. We, so well, we, are well, we are essentially talking about today through, at least at present, through the week of April 19th, 2025. But in reality, it's through December of 2026 that we're right. really talking about. I mean, that's considered to be our Revolutionary War because right. people say uh, sets of ceremonies. So, from, I mean, I realize that we're going to focus a lot on Patriot State coming up, but is it also true that the really popular one will be July 4th, 2026? Um, not in this region. Well, no, people coming elsewhere to this region. No, no, no. Okay, no. All right. There'll, there'll be, and I can address that okay. um, as we get through this, but okay. this is really what are we planning between now and the week of April 19th, we call it a Patriot Week, essentially. Okay. And I'm not going beyond that to Booker Hill and all the rest of the events that are local that will follow. Those will be subsequent updates that we'll do as we go, right? Okay. I, think, I think as we go, you're going to want more frequent updates, especially okay. on what's going on in Concord. And I've included a little bit of that in the end because I think that's it's about time to start being cognizant of the... Um, the ownership that you're going to have whether you like it or not. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the, the first one, um, and again, I followed uh, sort of Ryan's suggestion, let's put the Patriot grave markers first. So this is something that we just uh, uh, recently got approval from the board to uh, give to the SAR, the Sons of American Revolution. Uh, so they went and bought the markers. There are um, 11 in the uh, central burial ground and there are nine over in Green Cemetery. I think we'd have two old ones in the central burying ground that can probably be left. So we'll have um, maybe some extras. Um, so they've gone and purchased them. Um, we do, we did submit, we had to submit an application apparently to the historical commission for these. So I filled out an application and we filed it and their meeting is not until September 27th. And that was part of the reason we wanted to get some approval from the board because we couldn't wait that long to get the markers because it takes about six weeks uh, lead time on them. And we're trying to get this in this fall, okay? So uh, the markers are on order. They should be here by the end of the month. And the cost of those markers are being paid for by this uh, Sons of American Revolution the coordination of ceremony that we expect to do in probably late October, maybe early November at the latest, will be um, organized by the Celebrations Committee with support from the Historical Society. Uh, all of the costs for that, we believe, will be borne by um, 
Some of this we put into a grant to the Department of uh, into Tourist and Tourism, this uh, revolutionary 250 grant. If, if it gets approved, then we'll certainly be able to cover some of the costs there. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to figure out how to uh, fund this one. But we expect to have a ceremony at the uh, Central Bury Ground and potentially one at Green Cemetery also with maybe a, a procession between the two. Um, and of course, uh, we'll advertise it and uh, we'll have Minutemen, et cetera. And we'll, we'll get into the details of that as we uh, start to formulate that now. We have the guidelines from the SIR of what they want to see, and then we will be in charge of how we want to use those guidelines. So we will uh, maybe seek input from the board before we do that, just to let you know what we're doing. Uh, we can just send you a, a memo. I don't really think it necessarily needs a meeting, right? Okay. Um, and, and just to be clear, this is for the 20 patriots that are recorded as having fought in the Revolutionary War from Carlisle. Okay. Was there a Carlisle then? Or was it, it Concord? Was, it was part of Concord right. that a lot of people don't know. But we know it was yes. Car Carlisle yeah. from the address? It was a district at that point, yes. <clears throat> okay, so if there are no questions there, um, I will move on to the 250 events. These aren't in any particular order, they're just uh, as we've been sort of talking about them as a committee. So, um, the first one I have here is Estherbrook Trail Walk uh, coins. So this is something that was done for quite a few years by the Carlisle Minuteman prior to uh, 1974, and they went through 1982, I think, or 1983. And they included a, uh, a coin set, a booklet with the Revolutionary War years from 75 to 81 with a little history of them and each coin was different, right? So this was a, a uh, set that you could collect. Um, so the idea here is probably we're gonna do the same thing. This would be the first uh, of a set of essentially seven coins over the six years and the first one being in 2025. Um, Are these real coins? Um, no, they're, you could call them metals. I mean, they are uh, inch and a half in diameter, and they are, um, they're not cast, but they're stamped on both sides. So on one side, uh, in the past, we've had the, um, on all the coins, it had a picture of Carlisle and the North Bridge with the path that the Minuteman took, Minuteman statue, and some other stuff was on that. So we thought we'd maybe keep that theme, but the, uh, other side was specific to the historical event for that particular year that they wanted to highlight. Obviously, first year was the North Bridge. Other ones we had was the um, uh, Bunker Hill, and we had uh, naval battles, and so every year there was one until the uh, surrender of the British on the final year. Um, so I can show you at another time, if you like, or at the next one uh, meeting that we have on this, I can show you the the old coins, and I have a, a whole presentation on that and what we're planning on doing uh, for this. Did the Minutemen take the Esterbrook Trail to get to mm -hmm. North Bridge? It's clear that some of them must have taken the Esterbrook Trail, because if you're on the green, the shortest path, and again, you are walking, you are, um, is to take the Esterbrook Trail. But clearly there were three or four Minutemen that were on Concord Road. There's no reason for them to come to the center of town, especially if when the alarm was called, that they were told what was going on. And some, one of them belonged to Concord uh, Minutemen anyway. So they probably would have gone straight uh, to the North Bridge. So, and maybe even some went down River Road. But there's no, def whatever history there was, we think was lost with some of the early town records when they were, when they disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have a, an alternate. No, no. <laughs> um, the idea here would be that we would we'll follow a model very similar to that was done in 74 because there's going to be potentially a lot of people walking the trail. It's too cumbersome to try to do any transaction at the end of the trail. So what was followed in 74 is they had people print out and write their name on a coupon. And when they got to the end of the trail, all they did was get a punch put in the coupon. They came back the next day to Union Hall or the following weekend and claim their uh, trail walk coin. 
So we thought that was probably a good process. We'd follow something similar, maybe some pre-registration because we've got to figure out exactly what kind of volume we're talking about. In 74, they did more than 700 trail walk medals, so I'm assuming that we should be planning on somewhere around 1,000. Um, and I work through a financial model that says to make sure that the idea here is that this should be self-funding, right? So there's all of these events are intended to be self-funding. There would be no cost to the town for all of the 250 events. So that's the approach we've taken. Now we're depending on a little bit in the, the grant. If it doesn't happen, we'll have to work more revenue generation out of, uh, out of some of the events that we have here. And that will depend on how we price the coins. They won't be free as they were in 74. There'll be a small price. We don't think that's a problem. Um, we're also thinking, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I just was wondering about the uh, legal issues at the end of the Estabrook Trail. Uh, are you gonna be able to walk, actually walk? down all the way through the end and yep. go up. You, yeah, okay, yeah, that's all been yeah. squared so away with my, <laughs> my role on the Concord 250 committee as the coordinator uh, of militia companies. So I will be involved with all access for militia companies and where they're supposed to be and when they're supposed to be, et cetera. So okay. I will be close to those, so those egresses are that are there, right, line, right. Yeah. And we'll get into that with, okay. as we get into the Concord, public safety plans, et cetera. We'll get into all those details in the upcoming months. Um, my other thought here was a lot of the towns have a 250 coin, and I thought, well, maybe we'd look at having a 250 coin because there's some people that don't want to walk the Estherbrook Trail, and then maybe they would like some other memento, or they'd like to send it to somebody or have something, right? We'll have a, a fair number of tourists probably coming to town or people from out of town um, walking. So uh, we may be a second coin, and again, it would be a revenue generation um, type of product. And we have some possible logos for that. Yeah, so the first thing we said is we need a logo for all of our, any press releases we are doing, et cetera. And so uh, we have five samples so far that we'll look at in the, in the coming week and maybe pick some favorites. Um, I don't know whether we necessarily need to come before the board, but if you're interested, we'd be glad to share them with you. Um, I think we're gonna work quickly on the logo to make sure that we're able to utilize that uh, with some of the upcoming events, which will be shortly. Yeah. Um, okay, any questions on the coins? No, okay, we can always jump back, don't worry. Uh, Carlisle, uh, so news and events and press releases. Uh, we've talked to the Carlisle Mosquito. They've um, said that they would have a staff member on our, uh, on our committee. So we think that would be really important. It's time to start to get the marketing out there and get people knowing not only about our events, but I think about the preparation we're doing both in this committee and eventually from the select board. There's a place that they hopefully will be able to go look at for it all the time in the Mosquito would be a, you know, a box in the front, box in the back, or some place where they could go and see what the updates are to try to communicate. Do you have a website or a spot on the town website? Um, not yet, but you'll see further down we have a website. And um, we have a w website in the planning, let me put it that way. Okay. okay. Um, we talked a little bit about the logo. Um, we have something ready there that we can use that for different, and I put down 250 merchandise. So um, somebody uh, said maybe a t-shirt, and I said okay, so that might be good, but there'll be lots of other things I think that we'll come up with. And again, it'll be around what seems like the kinds of things people would want as a memento, a way to celebrate, as well as a way for us to um, generate some revenue, but at a minimal risk. What we don't want is a whole bunch of product and inventory sitting that we can't move, so. This is um, all Carlisle specific merch versus? This is Carlisle specific. Versus this would be Carlisle 250. To whatever Concords. Do. Right. Okay. Uh, like, for instance, the 250, we were thinking, okay, you could have an old outline map of Carlisle, right. what it was at the time, and you could have the 20 Minutemen's names in there. We could put the logo on the front, we could put that on the back. Uh, there's a number of different things. We have, you know, the Trail Walk medal or the 250 medal, and I have, um, from Phyllis Hughes, I have copyrights to her uh, pen and ink drawing. 
um, of the Minuteman through Estabrook Woods, so I can make as many copies as I want. So we could make that and put it in a frame and mm -hmm. put the coin in it. I mean, there's lots of ideas like that. What we don't want to do is overextend ourselves, right, and, and uh, overpromise. So we're starting with this list. We think this is executable, and uh, if it's not fundable, if we don't think it's feasible, then we'll then we'll just drop it. Right? We'd rather have fewer done well. Does Concord have the copyright to the image of the Old North Bridge? Um, yes, as well as the Minuteman statue. Okay. So I believe those copyrights have expired okay. on those. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> that's obviously been mu much discussion over the last 50, 60 years. Okay, yeah. so. Change the seal. Okay. okay. Public domain. Public domain. Good. Um, okay, uh, Colonial Fair is the, the next one. So this was um, a way, we think, to kind of get people really um, excited and more informed about it as we get closer. We were thinking the f this fall at one point, but we're too late in getting started there. So we think that maybe late March, about one month before April 19th, might be a good time to do this. And this would be uh, on the town green, Weather is not too bad in late March. It hasn't been, and we'll probably get a snowstorm that day, but uh, on the green and in Union Hall. So I've already talked about, uh, talked to FRS about the hall, and we can put the reservation in for that. It's kind of doing a 10 to 3 activity where we have planned events going on during that time so people could come in, see certain events, like I can get the British here, the militia here, and fife and drum music. So everybody gets a 15 minute slot per hour. And that way people can enjoy that. The stuff that's going on in FRS, I've got somebody that's colonial woodworking. We can have a table for the historical society, all the events that are happening around, and other stuff that needs to be indoors. And that people can come for a couple of hours, kids' crafts, maybe colonial toys they can make. We can have a little, yes. maybe food, maybe not colonial food, but maybe colonial style or whatever. So people can feel like, hey, I can come and have fun with my with my family for a couple of hours, then move on, right? That type of thing. So, so um, Christina, Route to Sustainability Day would be Earth Day of 25, right? That, that'll that be right before the actual April. April 20th stuff? I mean, that March is okay. I'm just saying, it's a bunch of events. Christina, are you on this? I'm, I'm here, I'm so sorry, I missed the first portion of the question. <laughs> Route to Sustainability Day would be, I assume, Earth Day or a Saturday near adjacent to Earth Day. Correct. We haven't actually picked a, a date for um, 2025, but it will be a Saturday before or after Earth Day, which is the 22nd. I can assure you it will not be on the 19th. <laughs> yeah. Or no, anywhere well, close. But you've got, okay, so the 20th and the 28th. Not Wait, the, th this is all about Carlisle stuff, not Concord stuff. So. No, I know, but Roots of Sustainability is Carlisle. Carlisle, I, and then you have yes. This, but I, unless they're going to go different than Concord Day, then I'm just saying um, a lot of events you got to just be aware of. You know, if there are any, if there are okay. any, please let us know because oh, we're hearing about we're, one, so. we're we're picking we're hoping to pick like late March. Right, but aren't isn't there also a, when is Patriots Day? April nineteenth. Saturday, April nineteenth. Okay, so I guess don't do it that day, Christina. <laughs> Okay, so it won't be the 19th of uh, April. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll aim for the 26th. You're going to see April. that that's a bad day yeah. Um, yeah. to do anything in town. When we get into the the planning piece of it, you're going to see that it's going to be a very busy day in, in town. Okay, sorry for that. I just no problem. Yeah, that's clear the good to yeah. know. Um, so, so the Colonial Fair would also be a revenue generation type of uh, event there. Um, we have the town flag, which um, I've now got a new owner for to finish it. Um, and she's promised to get it done by early January. So I think I, I trust her judgment and that it'll get done. So I think we can plan a late January or February maybe ceremony. First, I'm assuming we'll do one in town. Again, the celebrations committee will take the lead. And then we'll do one at the state house. Um, we have uh, Eric Heath and his mother, who would like, she made the first one, the only one, <laughs> would like to be part of that ceremony. So there'll be, uh, uh, that'll be a nice way to tie it together. We wanted to make sure the flag got done before the 250th, as that original flag actually was carried a couple of years before the bicentennial, but it was done for the bicentennial. 
So this replica will be done in time. We're not going to carry it in the 250. We'll carry the original to uh, to Concord for the 250th, but that flag should be hanging in the State House before then. Which should be great. Um, school projects. Another. So the one thing that we, especially in this day and age, is trying to get communicate with people about events that are going on. Most of the citizens don't read a newspaper. They don't really look at magazines. They get their news on their phone, and what pops up is what they look at, right? So there's not a lot of, let me go see what's going on with the 250. So, you know, marketing communications is a real challenge for every town. Mm -hmm. And a good path, especially in this town, is through the school. So kids that get involved in 250, uh, themed projects, obviously they come home with them and the family gets involved and they get much more interested in what's going on, right? So uh, we're working with the school to see, not maybe every grade, or could be, you know, you can have coloring stuff from Colonial Era for the, for the younger kids, but you can have lots of projects just to get that off the ground here so that they can put it into the fall, they can put it into the spring curriculum if they would like to tie it into uh, the Revolutionary War, which I think the fifth graders usually do in March or April. Um, and by the way, we've got members of our ad hoc committee. Everybody owns a piece of this to drive and figure out how does it happen, who's involved, what do we have done. So we're just starting to uh, mature some of these uh, ideas. Um, so these next 9, 10, 11, 12 are ones that were part of the grant were submitted by the Historical Society. Uh, they're in a different uh, font just because I cut and pasted them. Um, the first one there is a visitor guide, right, to the Revolution. So this would be a new printed guide and website. So there'd be a website. The Historical Society already has a website, but this would be one that is probably has a page devoted to this uh, to Revolutionary War, the Revolutionary War Patriots and history, etc. And I was thinking it makes a lot of sense. We should put a um, something on the town website that has some information there, maybe just a calendar piece, and then you can click the link to go to this website, which would be more uh, a lot more content, right? So we'll work that out as we get um, a little bit more um, closer to what we think that we want to do. Um, and there will also be a guide that could be used for people that wanted to tour the colonial homes around town. Which we're actually thinking of doing that as, this, as a, uh, an event at the Colonial Fair where you could show up and take a map or virtual one you could download and then you can get in your car and you could go visit and I can have Minuteman at a number of houses, you know, to kind of mark where they are and to, you know, whatever fire muskets or whatever, or just, just to be there. Um, but they would use this map as part of that. And again, this was part of the uh, submitted grant. Um, a Heal Revolutionary Open House, which would be at the Historical Society. So when, we're gonna, when would that be? We'll have to talk about it, but it seems to me like the fall would be a good time to do it instead November. of the winter, and we don't obviously want to do it in March if we're close November. to. Right? So we're thinking November yeah, for yeah. that. Okay. So it would be a downsized one there, uh, again, Minutemen, et cetera, and get people starting to think about uh, our colonial and revolutionary war history. Red Line Tavern Tour. Um, I believe we already got permission we can do this. We just don't have a date yet, right? She said May, so it would she be good. Yeah, okay. beyond. This would be one that would be after April 19th. Um, it's and a private residence now. Yes, it is a private right. residence, correct. Um, and I think, has John Trost talked to her? Is that uh, it? Phil did, actually. Yes. Um, okay. To Hillary Taylor, who okay. is the resident yep. and owns the house. And uh, she said she that, uh, well, her house was the Red Lion Tavern. The thing, all that remains of the Red Lion Tavern is a, a sign, it's a very remarkable sign, because mm -hmm. it was the Red Lion Tavern and at the beginning of the revolution, the Patriots scrubbed out the Red Lion and uh, painted a tree over it, but you can still see the outline of the lion. 
and we had the sign in the historical society house for a while and made rubbings of it and uh, the lions when you get to see them are quite remarkable because they have human faces and are wearing a crown but anyway they, they look like lions otherwise so Anyhow, this is that's this is in may right well yes obviously beyond april 19th we'll get people to start thinking about the other events that happen, right? And so we'll have other other ideas for the balance of 2025. So clearly Bunker Hill and other significant events, including uh, the, the, the cannons when they were done by Knox, right, during the winter time, et cetera, um, and then the final evacuation day in, in Boston would be sort of the end of our typical ones. And of course, Independence Day after that, just for David. <laughs> And finally, Minuteman House Tour. This was something that the Historical Society would uh, hire a company and a bus, right? That's the plan. That would do a professional tour. Uh, again, these would be covered by the grant, so they don't no cost to the town. But again, another another piece to put in uh, between now and April 19th. We don't want to throw everything in right up against the 19th of April. Right. So we think all these are doable. And we'll, uh, we'll figure out if any need to be trimmed going forward or if there are any additional ideas. Unless some of you got enough, have some ideas. Feel free to so chime you, in you months from now if you... Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. Now I'll get to the last one. Um, Concord update. So uh, I've been in contact with Fred Ryan. He's uh, head of the public safety and he's part of this overarching control group which will probably be located at Hanscom will be coordinating all of the all of the emergency uh, and public safety assets um, from Hanscom Field uh, as, as well as probably all the federal uh, uh, people that are involved with that but the the planning committee in, in Concord uh, this um, assistant fire chief and police captain Brian Goldman uh, said that they would be ready to set a date to talk to us, Acton and Bedford, um, sometime after the 19th of September. Or they said, call me after the 19th of September. We think we will have our draft of our plan and we'll be ready to talk. All right. So uh, what Fred said was their idea now is there are going to be some soft closures on Thursday, and then Friday they're going to be a systematic closing of the roads. Um, and in 74, they closed uh, the roads at, I think, 8 p.m. on Friday night. I think they're thinking sooner than that um, this year. The, some of those interesting, I just put some pictures I took from the Mosquito during the wintertime. I took a bunch of pictures from 1974-75, and you see one of them was like 120,000 expected, expected right. in 1975. Turned out that was about 100,000, we think, there. But they were clearly worried about um, the number of individuals to be there and Concord is saying we're talking 150, 180, it could be 200. You, you really but can't most tell. Most people, Scott, go to Concord, right? Yes, but many came through Carlisle and, and, and mm. so you're going to, and so if you look at just those, I only did a smattering of them, you're going to see that the whole town turned out because there were Let's see, 2,000 scouts coming from Chelmsford that marched to the bridge. There were 1,500 that came from uh, Westford that marched to the bridge. There were, uh, they had reserve, so the most interesting picture there is the one that shows the map of the town and where they, you might want to show that, where there was no parking on all roads leading that one there, leading to Concord. The dark lines are where there was no parking then they had two satellite spots, one in Indian Hill and one up towards Esterbrook Road and the other one over off of River Road. Those were satellite parking primarily for Carlisle residents, oh, 700 yeah. to one, 800 in the other. On the street, just on the side of the street? On the, in the neighborhoods, right, on the side of the street because there was no way to get into Concord. So what they decided to do was they would put the satellite parking and then the shuttle bus would be allowed to take them into Concord. So it was running every 20 minutes. One going to Fenn off of River Road, the other one off down to Farmer's Cliff from the Indian Hill uh, area there. And 
So they ran a shuttle bus, but they also had to get people from the center of town up to the satellite parking, those that didn't necessarily want to walk through the trail. So they were shuttling for the first couple hours, shuttling people from the center of town up to the satellite parking. But they also had uh, parking and camping at Foss Field. They had uh, port uh, toilets all over town. Um, and they had 93 National Guard in town helping with traffic. The whole town, for most of them, worked 24 to 36 hours straight. Police department, fire department, all the select board, uh, all the town departments, because there were all these people coming into town, and people would just abandon their car wherever, you know, they'd go as far as they could, they just abandoned it. Is this on so, Brian and Andrew's radar yeah. right now? So, so we've and, that's, for extra and that's when we'll get into the, when you get into the planning with Concord and the safety planning, then we get a much better idea of what we're talking about. And then we'll have to figure out, you guys will have to figure out, I'll help you if you want, have to figure out, so what does this mean to Carlisle and what do we need to plan for and hope the heck that we don't get 25,000 people or 30,000 people because clearly if they find out that they can get close through Carlisle, word will spread like that. And Scott, walk us through this. Like, where you're driving from Westford or Chelmsford or wherever, where where do you get stopped and diverted? Like, well, you would get stopped right at the Concord border. That's where the border is closed. And, and from then, the south, but also from the other directions that are not shown. Well, we're to the north, right? So you're all you're, you're going south no matter what. So I understand that people are coming not from the south. They're coming down or left or right. Concord's going to close. So if they come in from Acton, yeah. They can take this street here, but when they get here, they're going to get stopped. And now there's no parking. So if you do the same thing here, there's no parking here. Now they have to go someplace. What are they going to go? Well, shouldn't we there? really stop them at the border? Because well, then they'll be noodling around. Well, looking let's, looking this is the next meeting. We'll, yeah, we'll this is the next meeting. We can't just the parking. Yeah. You, we, gotta have we, we can decide how we want to handle it. <laughs> but last time, let's just talk about last time. Georgia oh. Last time they were allowed to drive and meander around. Like well, we had directions. we had signs, right? So if the parking was full yeah. at the satellite parking place, we'd say, okay, you have to go to the transfer station to park there. We're on a shuttle bus. Or you have to park over here down Foss Field, and then mm -hmm. maybe you shuttle down. So we have to figure out how to handle these visitors. We can't just turn them away, right? So I mean, I, you can't. This is, this is a really great introduction. Yeah. I can see the parking is going to be one of the main issues that we're going to have to deal with as a town. Yeah. We do yeah. have yep. other agenda items, yes. so I kind of need to wrap it that up. That was just to wet your appetite. That's great. But and I this is that. all April 9th. This is all focused on Patriots Day. Yeah. It's yeah. the day before. Day before. April, yeah, yeah. April 19th yeah. Yeah. is the yeah. big for and us. And I showed you what was going on. There's yeah. a big there's a big bolus of stuff on Patriots Weekend. Saturday, but Sunday, Monday. This is just one day, right? The comp this well, we, we also have the March event, our yeah. colonial No, no, no. Yeah. He's talking about yeah. this. This for the visitors is going to be starting Friday, yep. Friday during the day. People will try to go down some on Thursday night, but that'll be when it starts. So yeah. it's Friday during the day to Saturday night, okay. and then you're done. Right. Then you're done. Okay. Sunday, Monday, not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. So we will have you back when we get more oh, on yes. parking and stuff, but thank you for yeah, that. We'll get into really the details later. It's helpful and yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so fall asleep on this. Oh, no. <laughs> Scott, right. Scott, I'm your liaison. I have not invited you attended any. Can you email me when you have meetings? Sure, I can even bring you cookies. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> you can't open them, though. Yeah. When when is the next bring it on a plate <laughs> for them. Maybe it'll be easier to do. Scott, when's the, the next meeting? Right. Soon. Well, okay. our next meeting for the ad hoc committee was supposed to be tomorrow night. But I think what we'll do is we'll push it out a couple of weeks so we can mature some of these things. Okay. I will absolutely copy you on it. All right. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. It's helpful. I think it's important. We should all get outfits. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to be parking cars too or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> musket and I'll, I'll take they were by the drum. Oh, were they? Yeah. They'll be the guys oh, driving away at the border. I'll be like, <laughs> eight minutes to get it ready to fire. All right, David, you can pass the cookies, please. Oh, all right. All right. All right, so we're going to move on to the uh, Friends of Center Park next. If you want to come so. forward, Miss Saylor, and yep. introduce yourself. My name is Allison Saylor, and I am the president of Friends of Center Park. And we are coming up to the uh, fifth year anniversary of having an agreement with the town 
and so I'm here to do and sign the re-up. Um, I think it's all set, and I'm, somebody has a pen, I'll sign it. Yeah. I talked last time about how yeah. wonderful Center Park is, so I don't need to yeah. go yeah. over that again. All right. Any Are there questions? any questions from the select board? We saw the agreement in our package. Yeah. Yeah. All right. If there are none, maybe someone could make a motion. Back to the motion. Yeah. Uh, do you want to move to accept the terms of agreement between the town of Carlisle and the Friends of Center Park Inc. as presented? Second. Okay. Are there any thoughts or comments internally here, or not internally, but? Um, I think everyone's on board with the agreement. Well, it's been yeah. Okay. I think it, it was everything we discussed last time. It was. That's yes. seemed like it was good. All right. So we'll do a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Okay. You have a new agreement. We'll get that signed and. Do you want me to sign it tonight, or is that? Sure. I'll send it to you electronically. Oh, I can handle that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. That's not this. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Oh my goodness, we're ahead of schedule. Yeah. Quick. Famous last word. Yeah. Well, for now. Well, we could do the safety. He's here. Is she here? Yeah, she's here. Can we do that, or is that a public? I mean, there's going to be. Are there any people may want to? I would wait on that. I would wait on it. Do the administrative report or the liquor Yeah, license? TA report, maybe. Or any of the other things, the one day liquor license, we can roll through that. Start with that. The one day liquor license, that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hang on. move to approve the application submitted by Martha Feeney Patton on behalf of the Gleason Library Endowment for the insurance, sorry, the issuance of a one day special license to serve beer and wine at a non profit fundraising event to be held on November 16th, 2024, during the hours of 6 30 p.m. through 9 30 p.m. at 22 Bedford Road, Carlisle, Mass. Second. Okay, um, I will note that the um, Chief of Police has signed this, so. And I encourage you all to come. It's called Books and Beers. Yep. Brews, it's like Brews and Books, or, <laughs> brews or something like that. It's fun. It's going to be a uh, professional um, trivia guy. It's a pub. Ooh, great. Event. And uh, the Reed Homemade uh, Wine is also featured. Here. Oh, that's, oh, good, wine, that's good to know. He makes good wine, actually. That may change my vote on the liquor license, though. <laughs> we, oh, that's really it's cool. It's all designed to liberate you from your checkbook. <laughs> all right. So uh, unless there are more comments, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. None opposed, so I'll sign that. Is there a, as we're talking through the, um, the events and all this other stuff, is there a list that's starting to come together of different things we should start to reserve on our calendar? Dates, like dates and things like typically like April week is a week we go away, but it sounds like we're probably going to want to be here for like not, right. that. That's yeah. a big one this time. Yeah, two fifty. Yeah. But, but in terms of other things where we should be starting to block them off. Yeah, that's, that would, that's a good. Point. I would appreciate that. So this is the start or the end of the April break. Patriots is usually the start. April, eh? April breaks later this year. Really? It always starts with. Uh, Do they have Patriots school? Day. I don't know about that. I can look at uh, Yeah, they're on April break during this period. Right. April. Mm -hmm. Parents of school aged children, please note. No, they are. Actually, it's the beginning of April break. So yeah, beginning. They have and school on that Friday. And, and I'll tell you, I have a senior in high school, and they're planning events around this, yeah. meaning they're, you know, this is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. And Good Friday's on the 18th as well. <laughs> Um, yeah. So this Easter's be... on the twentieth. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot, a lot going on. And Earth Day's the twenty second. Okay. I take out the, the trash on the twenty third. <laughs> that's uh, that's in your <laughs> <laughs> every yeah. Wednesday. Uh, uh, it's the uh, all right. Yeah. The twenty. Okay. The week of the. Do you want to do the uh, cemetery oh, deeds? Okay. Hang on. Let me get back to the files. It's late April. Uh, late Easter this year. Uh, uh, no, Clark, ABC, TA report, Morris. I don't have cemetery deeds. We don't have deeds. Oh, it says we did. Yeah, I have them right here. Those are old ones. This are old ones. Oh. Okay. Now we get okay. to the TA report. Oh. Uh, All right. 
We need the to TA report. 10 minutes. So yeah, can we do a little of the TA report? Let's do it. All right. Sorry, I was there and I got distracted. That's you. Uh, okay. Okay, um, so one big thing we're considering right now in Town Hall is this first floor space. So some uh, recent vacancies, and I'm, I don't mean to categorize um, the loss of Peggy as a vacancy, but the, uh, the opportunity to look at space downstairs between the Council on Aging and Human Services and the Town Clerk's Office uh, is something that we're discussing. So we really want to think strategic and long term about what public space uh, how that space would be best used for, for, for public services. So I have a conversation with the Council on Aging and Human Services. I do believe your liaison will be there as well to talk about how to bridge community space for the Council on Aging from now until and if there is a senior center or, or community center. What would the next, because that's going to be several years. So what would the next few years be and how can we leverage Town Hall for that? So. Just want to make you aware of that conversation. I'll obviously bring more details as that becomes more solid. Um, also, if you've been in the Council on Aging Human Service Office, you know that the number of employees uh, compared to the space is, is not is not conducive to good work and to uh, the availability of the public to come in that office. So, all things that we're considering. David, are you the liaison? Two. To uh, who's who's Barney the, is the liaison? Barney. Oh, Barney. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. C -O -H. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the assistant town administrator is here. Sure, I will do that one. Excellent. So um, the planning board schedule appoint Noel Valand as the new uh, planning, zoning, and land use assistant starting uh, Tuesday, September 17th. Um, so she'll be working under Julie, but she'll also be helping the ZBA and then also general land use. Um, she has a bachelor's in environmental science and a minor in climate change and sustainability. So she oh. is really excited to be part of the team. Um, we're still collecting resumes for the DPW heavy equipment operator, um, also the f facilities technician posi position that will be helping all the uh, town buildings. Um, and we're about to post the uh, social services manager position for COAHS, and it'll be internally for two weeks. Um, and if it's still not filled, then we will post externally. Um, and then we'll also be hosting a sexual harassment and discri discrimination in the workplace training. Um, for all non-school employees, including part-time employees, on sub September 26th, and we'll offer two different times to do it. It's three hours um, for the full session, um, and so this will be part of the comprehensive training. We'll be requiring making sure all um, employees are doing right now. They do, you know, read and abide by the um, sexual harassment policy, but this will be up-to-date, relevant information of, you know, in, in Title IX information. And Aubrey's been working on acknowledgement of personnel policies, updating the personnel policies, which will come to you before they're updated. Yes. And then IT training for every employee and properly tracking that and making it part of an annual training package for all employees. So it's it's um, a big lift. Aubrey's done a great job with it. It's, it's overdue, of course, but it's also harder than it sounds when you're running a town with uh, one and two person departments to gather everybody to include public safety and DPW at one time to do trainings is hard. So we're trying to balance uh, operations with training to make sure that we're hitting all of the goals of the select board. So more information to come on that. All right, update for the fall town meeting. So the select board intimated at their last meeting that the town administrative bylaw would not be ready for the fall. Last night, the planning board did the same with their ADU bylaw. So they have said that they will not be bringing it forward right. this fall. The only other articles that we're tracking that you're tracking are the chapter 200A, section 9A, or the tailings that Sandy brought before you. Uh, change in the bylaws to the Veteran Celebrations Committee, not to change them, but to actually codify that, that name in the town bylaws. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple article. And then we talked a little bit last time about a uh, conservation restriction transfer that's being proposed. I reached, I reached out to that group and they said there's no timing necessary for the fall, so that can also wait till the spring. So all of this is to say you will be deciding at your next meeting whether or not to hold the fall town meeting. We do not have anything of significance to bring to you for a fall town meeting right now. Of course, that's your call, but I'm yeah. trying to get. Uh, will the uh, town meeting committee be talking about this and maybe thinking about um, how to format um, a Springtown meeting that would might be going over two days. 
we've talked about that. I think I think not having fall town meeting is probably helpful because most of the stuff we're thinking about doing we're not really ready yet to implement. Orig our original plan was that we would pilot certain things at fall town meeting and then enact them in springtown meeting, but most of those things are not really ready uh, to be done. And if it's a weak town meeting, which it will be, if we had it, it would be very weak. It wouldn't be indicative anyway. Right. So I think it's better for us just to wait. Um, as far as one day or two days, I mean, that's really our call. You know, I think we have to look at the, the pile of things that's there and decide. I, uh, that's a whole nother dynamic that, um, you know, to, to be considered, but we're not, we haven't really evaluated that. All right, continuing on, uh, I was joined by special guest Scott today at my yeah. coffee hour. Um, I can, sometimes we get a lot of people and sometimes we don't, just being transparent, but we do want to be available outside of town hall for people to speak to us. Today, and I didn't plan it, Scott, just because the boss was there, but a lot of people came, <laughs> a very robust conversation okay. at, at um, Ferns. Ferns. So thank so you. For sure. Can you, can you yeah. take, uh, we've got a minute or two, can you share anything, issues that are like, things that came up that people were concerned about just it's helpful for us to support. yeah I mean there were, so there were what four residents there yeah. and um, I mean the topics range from a wide range of topics in, in terms of uh, cemetery deeds or the, the cemetery task force to um, some of the, the challenges that that seniors face in Carlisle regarding um, property tax and how that relates to um, how appealing it is for seniors in, in Carlisle, and then you know related to that, assessment issues in terms of people seeing increases in their individual assessments, accessory to, uh, apartments, um, Highland Building, um, police station, fire station. So it was a wide range of topics. I would say that um, for me, it was it was beneficial to do this just to hear from folks directly, and I thought. Um, the, the comments, uh, I appreciate that people took their time to come and sit with us. The comments were substantive. Um, there was good discussion, interesting to hear the different perspectives and challenges people face. Um, and I thought it was, for me, it was very productive to, to hear the different perspectives. The town structure comes up a lot. So for yeah. the town study committee, one of the, I think, well-informed residents who came said, uh, town meeting feels like a rubber stamp, yeah. but doesn't know really how to make it less, less so they want an efficient town meeting. What was the um, demographic, like town meeting, more like town meeting? Yeah. Okay. Um, but it'd be great to rotate. We should all do that. I'd yeah, love to. I'd love, love to. I'd love to. Yeah, and I think one of us next time. We'll do it. We'll do. Next um, one's in the, in and the I think, park or something. I think there are, for certain for certain residents, I think it's a, it's a good forum for them to get their perspective across versus mm -hmm. feeling like standing up at town meeting and saying something or attending a, a public meeting um, yeah. is not necessarily always the best forum for people to represent their perspectives. So I think it's I think it's just good to to make those opportunities available and it's a good way to talk to folks and educate them and give them our perspective back and you know get them more involved. Yep. Great. So the next big outreach event this fall is what we're calling Town Hall in the Park. So we have several events planned to touch a truck with public safety in the DPW and then town departments going out for a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours in the afternoon to talk to residents about big issues. And you can you can probably tick them off if you want to. MBTA communities, ADU on the planning side. I want to talk about building projects if anybody wants to talk about that. And um, a, a, bunch of, a bunch of departments have already signed on and they're excited to, to get outside of the park. Hopefully it's a beautiful day and our residents can show up. We're hoping to draw a younger demographic with the uh, touch truck event for children, et cetera. Um, what day was that planned for? October 2nd. Oh, I'm going to be in here. Okay, okay uh, the LSC is asking the select board to consider authorizing a donation account for their maintenance work on the town's conservation lands. Nothing for you to move on there yet, but just letting you know. Um, I do anticipate a rash of these, so um, just something to consider. The 26 budget, so capital planning began in earnest this, this month. We have a slew of capital meetings where um, my working group, grabbing people from the finance committee uh, and David from the select board in order to talk about capital. 
and how that plan is going to come together for your first draft read on October 8th. And that's supposed to inform your goals and budget discussions for FY26 on October 8th. So that is going good on. meeting. Yeah. So we talked about town hall, police, fire, rec, and then we're going to talk about uh, school and facilities, and then we're going to talk about roads and road plans and uh, DPW equipment. Okay, do you want me to continue or do you want no, to? No, I think it's now time to switch yeah. over, if that's okay. okay. All right, so we're moving on to our next agenda item, which is the safety committee. And I think we're gonna get an initial report and talk about North Road and Rutland Street. So um, does the TA wanna kick it off or how do you? Okay, so uh, I have Laura here, so I'll just introduce her. So Laura Harrison is the uh, newly appointed chair of the safety committee. The safety committee has organized itself, has uh, committed to learning a lot about the town, the town structure, and, and created a bunch of goals, and is now gonna move into recommending things to you. However, there was um, an initial recommendation that Laura will present to you, stemming from discussions about North Road and Rutland Street and uh, uh, some of the dangerous things precipitated by the, the event that happened with the, uh, the young child not too long ago. Great. From Laura. Perfect. Thanks, Ryan. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Fantastic. Wow. Um, thank you for that, and thank you for your time tonight. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about the work we've done so far, how we're thinking about the committee's mission and the recommendation that we submitted for your review. The committee met for the first time on August 14th. During that meeting, we reviewed the committee charter and we discussed some top line goals from across our members. Broadly, the committee intends to help review and address concerns related to road safety, line painting signage, guardrails, pathways, accessibility, and employee safety. To do so, um, we are reviewing resident concerns, we're gathering data to assess town intersections, we are reviewing complete streets and other town initiatives, and we plan to invite town council and a town engineer to help educate the group about the constraints that we're, work we're operating under. So this work will serve to create a prioritized list and the tools with which we can make further recommendations. Several members of the committee immediately raised the topic of the intersection of North Road and Rutland Street, where there have been multiple recent accidents, the most recent of which was very serious. In addition to continued speed enforcement on both streets, we discussed a number of possible solutions, and Jim Hall actually helped us identify a few measures that could potentially be taken immediately. We conducted a site visit to North Road and Rutland Street just two days after that, on August 16th. At that visit, DPW puts together a plan to trim back trees and brush to improve line of sight, to repaint and move the stop lines on North Road, and to add warning signs in advance of the intersection. That portion of the work is actually now complete, but we also discussed adding stop signs on Rutland Street to create a four-way stop there, similar to what was done successfully just south of there at the three-way intersection on Rutland Street and East Streets. The committee met again on uh, September 4th, where we further discussed and voted unanimously on this action. We believe that this step is appropriate given the speed and the frequency of traffic through the intersection, and Chief Aminola has offered additional police detail to help with the initial adjustment. Um, that's really it. I really appreciate your time and attention on the matter. I am, of course, happy to talk further about the re recommendation or other committee work as needed. Sounds good. Just for my own benefit, in terms of adding stop signs to a road is is there what's the process for that is that just something that we vote it the select well, board votes that it's well, not it depends on the road if it were a state road you have to do okay go through can do it on roads, 225 for, uh, right. just one of our roads we can do it where we think it's okay needed that's one of the things that uh, laura just mentioned in the committee why town council and the town engineers are coming so that they can answer the committee asks, can we do this can we do that or what can we right. recommend to the select board so they're going to educate themselves but this one is select board purview and stop sign. Okay. Because when we did the, the rotary, I know there were a lot of regulations around signage and mandates, which is why there's so many. Because it's state road, right? So not only it's state road, road. Not only state road but the state funding money. came from the state. So you <laughs> right. were required to follow mass dots. And that's standards. a strings attached. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we don't have anything to vote on tonight. Um, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do, we do have the motion of the. Yeah. Thing. I just wondered, you you had adding dangerous intersection signs. What is a what does that look like? What is a dangerous? So what it would look like is uh, approximately 100 200 feet before the intersection. It's a yellow 
diamond, diamond that says dangerous intersection ahead. Uh -huh. So that would actually go under the, uh, yeah, it looks like that. Okay. It's a dangerous intersection. Yeah, I could have looked it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> so now the pole will also have a stop sign ahead yep. for a while until people get used to it, and then it'll lead into the stop sign. So it's a way to it's a control measure to slow people down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I go through that intersection on a fairly regular basis, and I, I think it's a great idea. I don't see a stop sign impeding no. the flow of traffic There's on that. There's now a two-way, right? There's a two-way coming on. North Road. North Road, but it's, 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 it's but there's always that moment where you cross where you just oh, I, like I go every day that way and I pray no one's put their put their little nose out and yeah. then I and it's not a it's not a heavily it's not like you're gonna get no. traffic backups or anything. Right. Right. North Road has port sight lines, which yes. causes the problem. Yeah. Yes, and, and they've improved the sight lines and they have also put the stop the the, the line yeah. closer Back to the way. intersection yeah. so you can actually see, but. It's still, um, still tr tricky. <laughs> no, and I, yeah, it, it just yeah. seems like a, a good recommendation, and I, I certainly support it. So staff does serve on this committee an advisory role. So both chiefs are involved, Jim's involved. I'm, I'm there at most meetings. The most enlightening comment for me from Chief Amendola was they have done speed studies there, and because the speed limit is what it is, it, and we were standing there, it feels like people are flying, but they are within within the speed limit. So yeah. there's not a lot you can do in terms of enforcement to slow it down, which is why he was in favor and the fire chief was in favor of having to deal with accidents and other responses of creating a situation where you have to stop. At least three people are gonna stop. Right. So yeah. even in a worst case scenario, you have one more chance to not have an accident. Right. Okay. And I, I wanted to make it clear that the committee's not set on signing everywhere and putting stop signs everywhere around town. Mm -hmm. This one is just of particular interest because of the history of it. So the only thing for you, Mr. Chair, is whether you want the protocol of allowing the public to comment for a month or two weeks or whatever. I, I don't care. But I, I generally like that. I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that. And I know that you know we want to move quickly and be responsive to safety concerns, but we're also a public board and always seek public input because these are other citizens who want to weigh in. Is there anyone who has other thoughts? I mean, Kate, you've been on the committee, so you're, you know. Well, it's a committee of citizens. It is a and, committee. And people can um, also, you know, have input there. But that's true of almost everything we do. But we still we still use these similar things for one meeting. I don't care. But what would the what would the forum be for the public input? They would just write you. They would just email. Right. I'm just wondering. This is in in my view the first time. But I guess they've had a public meeting for the safety committee. So you could say you know informed citizens would view that and maybe it's written about in the mosquito and which it was I believe and mm -hmm. they had um, you know it was, people can talk about it and if they had comments or opinions they could share it with us or with mm -hmm. that committee we just haven't had that we've had this meeting and then we're voting on it and so I, I generally like to have I mean I just think is but I'm sympathetic to safety and the you know urgent nature of changing things if they're unsafe conditions what's the lead like what the process to actually install the stop signs is that what's entailed there like is that a pretty quick thing you order a venue Pop them in. It doesn't Less take six months like everything else. It's about an hour. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But I mean, we I don't. I don't see a flood of people coming for this particular issue, but it's really about the policy and the precedent of yeah. if we're putting two, up two weeks, signs two weeks, in town. Two weeks. Well, I think. I don't want to go on record. Then there'll be an accident and I'll look like an idiot. But generally, we. I don't know. If we feel it's an emergency, we should do it. Otherwise, we should give it the two weeks. As a I would tend to agree with that, but I've, you know. We don't know. It, it, it might happen in two weeks. So. To Scott's question, um, Ryan, if we said yes tonight, when are the stop signs in? As soon as Jim gets them. So I would, I don't think it would take more than two weeks. Yeah. Okay. The other thing we could do is we could have that, we don't have a policy in place, we could set that as our policy going forward and approve this. If, some people wanted to. It, it, were there any perspectives or comments about reasons not to put in stop signs in any of this discussion? I, my, my thing is, I just don't know what I would hear that would change my opinion on this one. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, except for somebody just complaining, it's, you know. They I mean, like to drive fast. Honestly, regulation. we no, had we somebody <laughs> complain. I think drive we, fast. The, in, what, the Rutland, yeah. the third stop sign on Rutland, yeah. somebody complained because um, they had a stick shift and they thought it was going to be hard for oh, them the to yeah, start yeah. back up, you know. At, uh, and that was the one complaint we had about that. We put it in. It's good had, practice. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. You know, um, I think something like this, um, you know, we also have all of our, our, our safety, you know, staff who that were in favor of this. We had a terrible accident there. Uh, it wasn't yeah. The first accident. And I think. I don't think we should wait two weeks well, to see if somebody's okay. going to come. I'm in favor, but I, I I'm in favor of voting on this tonight. But I do think we should maybe also tonight just have a put in place a, a, we, we a, a policy or a practice for we have already. Right. Right. Well, and, and Laura, I think I would ask you um, as the chair, and you know, obviously the liaison or Kate, you're officially on it. Yeah. So, um, but maybe in the future that we work out some process where you you bring this, you know, to the board or at least it gets in the TA report um, a week before, and we ask for public comment. Somehow we get the word out, just because I think it's good government to to have public input. And we said this one, well, we can't think of anything, but that's why there's the public. They think of things that we don't think of, so. To answer you, Scott, I mean, I don't, we used to do this. We used to say, the motion used to be a two-part. The first of which was waive our standard practice of, maybe that was a school committee. <laughs> I moved to waive our standard practice right. of waiting a and then we right. do the motion. So. All right. Well, why don't we why don't we vote on this tonight to, sure. to yeah. pass this? But I think going forward, um, maybe the chair of the safety committee can kind of take that under advisement and make sure that you get the information to us, and so we can disseminate it. And I think it's good to have even the mosquito yeah. as yeah. part of that, you know, to get the word out, just because yeah. it's helpful. Yeah. I'm okay. Agree. So, um, any a motion? I'll, I'll I'll do it. I move to. Direct the town administrator to install a four-way stop at the intersection of North Road and Rutland Street per the recommendation of the safety committee. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll just do a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. All right. Thank, thank you. you yeah, thank yeah, you thanks, to you and thanks, your Thanks, Lauren. Thanks for all the work for the committee. I mean, that's really nice that they're- Thanks so much. This is really important. I'm, I'm thrilled. Sure, okay. sure. Well, and we look forward That's to seeing, good yeah, more good work ahead. Okay. All right. Moving along. Um, There's no red lights. <laughs> we're early on the TA bylaw draft review, yeah, okay. but th I think that's okay because it's going to be lots of lots of deliberating ahead of us. Lots yeah. of deliberating. All right, all right. So I had wanted to arrange this a little differently than what we had done. Or we've started this. Um, we started down the road first, kind of identifying what what we may want to do, which is a possible TA bylaw that we'd want to bring before the town or mm -hmm. potentially the legislature. We've heard from town council at this point about how that may have to move forward. I have asked town council for some more information on um, what would need to go before the legislature and what would not need to, just so that we have that information readily available, and they'll be producing that. Um, it'll probably be in the next packet. But in this step, I thought it was important that we really kind of figure out from, as a board what what we as a board would like to delegate to the town administrator. And I, I kind of put that memo in the mm -hmm. packet. Um, the purposes of this, I think, that the board has said to improve the functioning and effectiveness of Carlisle's daytime staff and administration, to free up time for the select board to focus on the policy priorities of the town, and three, to provide the existing town administrator and future town administrators a clear set of roles and responsibilities that will aid in directing a well-functioning town government. So. Given that, um, 
w we kind of put together a, a uh, categories to consider, and what I'd like to do tonight is to go through each of these bullets and see if we can reach some type of consensus as a select board as to what we would want to, what authority we might want to delegate to the TA. Um, we can certainly ask the TA who's here if we have questions on these, um, but as far as, you know, but if there are other things that come up, that's, you know, what we want to talk about as well. The point here is to once we can agree on these or we think we, we know what we want to do, we can then make sure those are in a draft bylaw. Um, many of them may already be captured in the draft that Kate put forward, but I think it's important to have this step first, and then we'll put them in the draft bylaw, we'll have council review it, and then we'll go out to um, all of the committees um, that we're the liaison to and um, really talk about this and, and put this out there and explain why we think this is, might be a good idea. and. From there, try to, you know, assuming we want to do it, build support, and then take it to town meeting in the spring. So that's, that's kind right. of the path that's that right. I'm thinking. So going through these categories, if you have them, and maybe uh, the town administrator can put these up on the screen just so that everybody can see them. Aubrey, can you take notes on this, please? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So the first category to consider is uh, the appointment authority. But before, okay, I do like your approach, but taxometrically, yeah, let's first say above these details, because you have in your second bullet there, is there any check on this power? I would say the first thing is what I think we heard from council that we, the select board, have the authority to delegate anything that any authority we have, we can delegate. That's kind of what I remember from council. Right. And I just want to get an understanding. So we'll delegate a bunch of things, but don't we always have the, the right to recall it in anything? It's not just appointments. Anything we change our mind about, we can just pull back, right? Are you talking about once we have a TA bylaw? Yes, yes. Well, not if it's a bylaw. Not if it's a bylaw. The okay. town can pull it back as right. once it's a bylaw. Okay. We can go we to can, town meeting. So we are actually moving the authority from ourselves to a guy who works for us. Correct. And, so. and it may be, David, that out of these discussions, we determine that a bylaw is not as what we want, and we may go for but policies or right. something. But, okay, so let's but just then every the board rule. can then change those I know. policies. No, 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 I get all that. I don't want to rehash. We've done all that. Okay. So, all right, so we have a set of authorities that come to us from the MGL or whatever, right? And we can decide, either bylaw or policy or whatever, we can delegate to the TA, but again, globally, so maybe we can't recall the, we can't undo the bylaw, but we could always build in SB oversight on anything, right? Yeah. Not just appointments. Or which which can be uh, executed or not. I mean, we could waive it also. We can waive it anytime we want, so but I mean, I we, you want to right. put something so I think we want it. something. So I think yeah. some of these questions don't have to be functional specific. They can be addressed by that mechanism. Yes. I just think this is helpful because we tried to illuminate what are the things we may want to give up or power we want to right. give up. Okay, so let's just enough. use yep. this Got as it. a guide, yep. David and, or, and everyone, yep. and go. So who can the TA appoint or who can the TA not appoint? So this is on the appointment authority. Yep. And in there we have all employees, uh, police chief, fire chief, others, exclusions. Um, the school, I don't, don't have a question mark near because we are not going to appoint and that's going to be clear that we're not we're not involved in the school but the library I don't know if we have the authority again we will find out those but the question is what types of things um, library fire department board of health cons com others and this is well, and town clerk which yeah I, I kind of like to work from a set of principles okay right. um, and I think one of the principles for me is we are talking about the operation of town hall. Right. The school is not in the town hall. The library is not in the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would say of the appointments, the ones that I'm interested in seeing being appointed and managed yeah. more centrally, it yeah. would be the ones that are kind of, really, right. you know, the, the land yeah. use boards, right. the assessors, right. the... Um, so can I offer a, a, a counter opinion on that? Okay. I, I agree with 
later, you know, management of town hall and buildings, time of operation, and yes, I'd say also, well, also to some degree, performance reviews, normative things with HR. But not being located physically in this building, to me, makes no difference functionally to things that are integral to what we have as authority over. Police, I, fire. I know, but the library. The uh, library, maybe we don't have even have the authority. I don't. A, I don't a we don't have the authority. But uh, beyond that, um, if we did not have a library, this town would still, we would still have, you know, sort of the essential um, government functions would be taken care of, right? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking essential government functions. The police and fire are not? No, no, they are. I didn't say they weren't. Okay. But, uh, I, I think you're getting a little tangled up in, in an artificial structure. That's my feeling. Okay, well, maybe. The hours of town hall, dress code, We're not whatever. there yet. We're not I know, there. but I'm saying I buy, I agree with Kate's argument about location for those things, but I don't agree if you say, as you just did, essential government functions. To me, essential government functions, which of those statutorily do we have no authority over? Schools, okay, we understand. Library, maybe, we gotta figure that out. And pretty much everything else we do, right? Now there are some things which I'm not clear on, like does a strong chief has the right to hire his own people? Is yeah. that one of the things of a yeah. strong chief? And, uh, and operate his own uh, equipment and uh, uh, Okay. It I mean, DPW is not in here, it. but they're clearly town hall employees, right? Yes. And then the other question I have is the, the mandate of Board of Health. Do they have the authority to hire a health agent? Yes. They do. Yeah. So those are the ones that are in the bucket of well, the gray why, bucket. Yeah. That's. But there are others that aren't located here, like DPW that, and police, that our authority line is pretty clear, right? Well, the police only because we have a, a weak chief and not a strong chief. If we're a strong chief, right. we would not have the well, we are a weak chief, so. Yeah. We don't mean that pejoratively, yeah. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> That's a term. <laughs> no. No. Um, okay. Well, again, it's, it's, it's coming up with, and right. I think it's easier to work on the exclusions than sure. on the inclusions okay. here, just okay. because it seems like I, I my, go We're ahead. talking appointments, not... We're not talking when we say appointments, we're not talking about hiring. Yes, we are. Talking, yes. So we're, we're talking. talking we're not talking about appointments in terms of committee appointments. We're talking not yet, no. but we will. Hiring, hiring. and firing. Hiring and firing. hiring and firing within the town structure yeah. of town employees. Right. So the daytime government. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. the question is, and I think Barney had some comments she made just in preparation yep. for this, but police, fire, and town clerk were right. her right. thing that she thought that we should have oversee. Yeah. Can, can I ask another question? Yeah. Uh, Khan's comment is an appointed board by us? Uh, it's an, yes, it's appointed, yes. but right. they have the authority to appoint there. But through us? No. Okay, independent. Independently. And planning board is elected, but and, and they then, don't and have the authority to hire a planner. Yes, they do. They do? Yes. So, the re so going back to what I was trying to get at, maybe I didn't <laughs> say it quite okay. properly, I would also like to ensure that we have, that we are following best practices of HR. Yeah. Because w if some board is doing it, they may or may not be following best practice nor law um, in their hiring. And so I would like to have some mechanism for us to be ensuring that things are done properly in the hiring process. Now, I think they, they should still have the final word, but we need, I think, our HR department needs to be overseeing all hiring and firing to ensure that it's done correctly. And we don't have that currently. And we have no mechanism for doing that. Well, and, and by nature of our town and our size, I mean, I, again, it's, silos are, are are not our friend here. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, in some larger towns, there may be more case for that. But I think one of the things you hear feedback on, and you know, we see ourselves, is when you have silos, it can sometimes work against kind of the needs to have staff that can pitch in at different places at different times. And so I think within that, one of my higher level goals would be to empower the town administrator to um, essentially 
remove those silos and have control over staff so they can be deployed in the most efficient way and shared shared when necessary. Um, and so wherever those silos exist is kind of where I would see the town administrator having some authority to hire and and do performance reviews and have a say because I think that's one of one of my key goals would be to would be to counter those existing silos. So, um, you know, I don't know where. Police and fire are, you know, it's, it's kind of a different evaluation process of the employees. So, I, you know, we can discuss that. But I think within kind of certainly town hall and the areas we've talked about, I would want to see the, the town administrator have the authority. Right. So when we're talking about HR in particular, of daytime staff. So, yeah. for example, we're not talking about the planning board. We, we're not saying we want to change the structure of the planning board and have it you know, appointed by the town administrator, just to be clear. We're going to keep it as an elected board. It's, we're talking about the staffing of that board because currently the staffing is, in theory, controlled by the, that board in and of itself. So the planning board or the the, um, um, health agent. the, the board of health, another one would be the CONSCOM, that those boards in particular, the the Board of Health is elected, but the Board of Health's um, you know administrator who is there is actually reports to the chair of the Board of Health for you know administrative duties, but there's n the only oversight is the chair or is the board right. itself, and so we're talking about yeah. changing that structure so that we have a more comprehensive HR structure right. throughout right. the daytime government. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, which right. is operated and overseen by the daytime co government, who is actually on site and can is in yeah. which a position yeah. to do that evaluation, mm -hmm. which would, we would seem to make a lot of sense. Yeah. So I think, are we all in agreement that we would like that across all boards? I, you know, I would like yes, of course, but I'm I'm trying to work this crazy quote. Ryan, to my recollection, hired Julie as town planner. Mm -hmm. No, didn't planning board did. I did so. We had a memorandum of agreement with the planning board yeah. that I would assist in the hiring process. Okay, so you assisted. Right. So same, you do. You, same do. Thing. you heard uh, Aubrey give a report tonight of hiring the the planning board assistant. Yeah. So she said the planning board appointed it, but we okay. we have been given delegated authority to help with hiring. Okay. That's through a memo. Which is what we would like to have from all okay. the boards. Right. Okay. So, but we can't <laughs> codify in a by so in a bylaw we could. In a legislature. In a legis well, legislature, again, yes. Again, I don't want to get into the mechanics tonight of that. I would rather have the, this is just so about philosophical. Like, this what is would you what, like what, it to if, be? If whatever we would like it to be. And then we're going to go through with the attorneys okay. to figure out. Right. Okay. So what, what I'm hearing is. Hold on one second. No, so it's like, so I'd like to see town administrator, org chart, like direct solid lines from all the different departments, yes. solid line from the TA up to the select board, and then dotted line to the different um, specific boards, right? Yeah. Right. So, so and right. an individual who says, I'm going to do as I please because the org chart says I have a dotted line with this other board. Like, does the solid line beat the dotted line? Well, yeah, the solid, in my, in my <laughs> the solid line is an actual line. The dotted line is just a, okay. Yeah. you know. Okay. Sorry. Okay. But I, I think it's important that we have, again, I haven't seen an org chart. I imagine if we looked at the org chart of how things work today. It's fairly complicated and there's lots of different. I mean, uh, I don't think so. I think there's a few. I, I think we need to distinguish between hiring and firing and administering. Like these are your working hours, here's the performance review process, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Right. I'm all okay. for the okay. latter. We're, we're no. the, that's the hiring and firing will be on the next thing. Well, no. This is appointment. It's hiring. Well, you're right. You're right. So, <laughs> I mean, I think that's where we started. That's is, hiring, right? Right. Hiring is a very special thing, and it sounds like... Firing authority. We're done. Well, hiring and firing to me go hiring. together. Hiring. They don't go apart. Everything hiring. in between hiring and firing is administrative, and I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with the other one. Not because I don't want it, because I think it's going to be a minefield of conflicting legal things. Well, I, yeah. I, I think if we articulate our goal, and then that's where we lean on town council to say right. this well, is... Well, I like what know. happened, I guess, with planning board, is there was a memorandum of understanding. Right. That 
with uh, that board. With that board. And you may have to and do that board. with the board. But so. that was kind of an interim step. I think what okay. we're trying to do, if okay. if we want, yeah. is to really yeah, yeah. formalize this. You don't need so memorandums in the right, future. Right. That this has become, and it's not just for the current TA, this is trying to set the town up for the future to be more yeah. efficient and effective with its HR. As, yeah. as Scott pointed out, you know, mm -hmm. one of the benefits right. would okay. be shared services, whatever that might be. You know, okay. the, the one person managing that would be, or an authority doing that would be more effective, I think. Yeah, and I think you hear from, you know, residents, they, they just want their question answered, they want yep. good employees, okay. good service, and I think a lot of, you know, a lot of the feedback you get is, why is it this way, why is it that way? Like, at the end of the day, we wanna provide services to the community in the most cost-effective, process-effective way. Mm -hmm. And I think moving to this model for our town, given our size, given where okay. we are, makes the most sense. Okay, yeah. we, right. we don't need... Plus, it ensures, as I said, that you're using the best uh, HR um, practices, and that you're not going to run afoul of some yeah, bad okay. things down so, the line. And that's great when you have a, uh, and we're talking future, we're not talking people, but you know there does need to be um, oversight because if you get the wrong person, in the, if you have the right person in that role, fantastic. If you have the wrong person in the role, yeah. you need the ability to, to, you know, aside from the ability to just fire that person you need some oversight so that you're not in the in the interim document it yeah so this is what we're going to entrust in the town administrator well no I'm, what i'm what i'm referring to is what's the what's the select board's oversight on that just to make sure that it's not being that power isn't being abused or misused or well that's the check that, that yeah. we're asked we were asking it seems to me if you keep a some sort of a check so uh uh you know three-fifths or whatever so you don't necessarily need to use it every every time, right. but if there's time available you to need you. it, right. then you've got it. What are the part? But going back to your, your point, for the appointments or hiring, what we, we said, school is its own thing. What are the other parts of the town where it doesn't make, if there are any, it just doesn't make sense for him for the town administrator to play that role? Well, the library is one right now that's a question. And why is it a question? Well, the trustees have hiring authority. Right. Okay. And, and, and it, they're elected. I think you need to start, Scott, with who's independently elected. I've got schools, Board of Health, Planning Board, assessors. trustees. Is there anybody else? Assessors. Assessors. The Board of Assessors is independently elected. But theirs Can is I weird. This? So theirs you, is sure. weird, yes. <laughs> Board of Assessors is weird. So you appoint the principal assessor, but the assessors remain the ability to appoint all the other staff. No, but they're not elected. They yes, they are. They are elected. Yeah. So yeah. we appoint somebody who's already been elected? So we appoint the chief assessor, but they appoint all other employees. I see. Which is weird. Yes. Okay, so you've got these, so the first, to me, the first line is, yeah. if they were independently elected, then they have a line of authority to the citizens of Carlisle, basically. No, but I'm saying that's something you could they change through a legislative a board. To the board. That what, what do you mean good luck with that? I'm just saying they have a constituency. Well. And yeah. they're gonna, I think with planning board, it's instructive that Ryan had a memorandum of understanding. You can probably get there in that fashion. I don't know that you can get there, but you town. That's why we we're talking a broader yeah. thing because I think that we've all reviewed this. They yeah. had a committee. The what yeah. was the name of the task force report? The governance governance task, task force, which yeah. really reviewed this and suggested this is a really smart direction something to I think agree. about so we're having this yeah. but okay. but i think we we have the ability to work to codify this and get there okay. so, so i don't go. I, yeah. I don't think I, I think barney had singled out gleason as she d thinks that it should be excluded um and i'm i'm kind of she's not here but i'm kind of wondering why because i i think yes it's a trustee board but right. you know the points but you know if we're trying to get HR as a umbrella for the town so we can have consistent colas so we can have all you know effective town management I would think we would have all now the yeah. school is separate I, I'm, I'm acknowledging that that's yeah. its own thing but but I would think we would want all of them I, to I, fall I under agree that. I think Gleason should be under there first of all for instance they um, they came to us several years ago looking for a policy for family, you know, maternity, 
exactly. So they, they do feel bound by our um, HR policies. So why, we should, why shouldn't we right. then be? And as an effective manager of the TA, you know, we would hope that the TA would go to these organiz the, the, the libraries, you know, the, the head of the library and say, okay, well, what are your staffing needs and everything? And, and you know, be knowledgeable about that. So it's not just the TA making the decision, it's the department head who is saying we need help. Inherently, you know, it's, there's also the budget process. So those those positions have to be funded through the budget, which the TA is yes. involved in. Right. And my, I'm not envisioning a world where the TA is now running the library. In, in a in a properly functioning structure, you'd have a, a TA who we have a, a good library director, and they make decisions and w they intervene if if and when there's a personnel issue that can't be resolved, right? Or that's part of it. Yeah. Um, in an ideal world, you know, it would be well managed on both ends and business would proceed as a pace but this is this is really for when something's not working or you need to share resources or do something um, that's when having the, the the TA having that additional authority to, to make it happen I think comes into play mm -hmm. yeah. it's not it's not like we expect the TA to hire all the part-time you know interview and hire all the people working at the library it's to manage when there is this conflict um, between a resource or a performance. Yeah, but we also, also as well, want to ensure that all the positions are advertised correctly. Yeah. Oh, here yeah. Here all the and all that stuff. And I don't know. Did the library uh, go to you when they're? Yeah. They so they already kind of do use our HR system. So there's a, you know they may not have. You any, know, I, I think so. we're all in agreement on the day-to-day -day administrative HR functions. I think we all agree. We should well, take as much of that. We may, but I don't think some boards. Other no, 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 we got a job to do. But to yeah. Travis's point, I believe we're all in agreement okay, on that. Okay, great. All right. Okay, I don't think we're in alignment on appointing. Okay. Well, but let's move that, to that, that then. Okay. The, the, uh, except the other one to, well, the, on the boards. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We'll move to appointing. Well, I mean, that's we'll where you started. I'm yep, just I going, started on right. appointing. So, okay. You're appointing I, committees, you right, mean? We, we, well, no, we don't appoint. We clearly appoint committees. Schools, let's again go to the independents. Schools we have taken off the list. Yes. Assessor is weird. I don't know what to do with that. But I would say Board of Health, Planning Board, Library, as it relates to hiring the librarian, I guess those three, where the function will, to some degree, the function will reside in town hall, to your point, at least not library, but the other two. I don't know, I, I believe, and of course we can go petition for home rule and all this jazz, but is it productive? I mean, it, should we acknowledge that those independent boards have that authority, but the TA and the ATA will assist, you know, we can assist in the way that Julie was hired. Nobody's not trying to acknowledge that they, they have right. that authority. What we want is for them to accept um, some guidelines uh, yeah. about how they we should write that they, we should write um, all that in we should write that, that we should write in the process of hiring. they should hire according to the Carlisle process yeah. but but what about when you have a resource in w one department has one FTE and another department has one FTE and it's determined you just need 0.5 to share between the two and both sides say no we're not going to do it you isn't know, that I where think it's a good point, and I think if we could beef up, I guess the way of edit is to beef up the, so if, if at hiring and firing, we acknowledge that the independent boards have that purview, but in the middle, from day two when they start to day T minus one, they come under TA rules. And I think well, TA why, rules. Why would see, I, see, I'm not with you on that. just deferring to the, I thought what we're talking about is bringing the hiring authority under never the team. I mean, honestly, they'll never, we can tilt at windmills all we want. I know our Board of Health very well. They will never, in our lifetime in this town government, see that authority. Well, but it's, this it's, is about, this is a, first of all for our board to decide initially and to go out and petition them, and you're saying, well, they'll never do it, but it's really for us to send the message to the town, and it's the town voters at town meeting yeah. who are going to decide this. And when, 
if there is compelling reason why this structure makes more sense for our yeah. town going forward, I think we could have okay. a, a, a shift. And I, that, that's why I, as chair, had really wanted to take this up now, because okay. I think there's momentum, okay. and I think there's cause to do it, because we're looking forward at our budgeting, which has been really yeah. done nicely for the next you know five yeah. years, and we're seeing these costs go up. Yeah. And th this okay. is a way to manage sure. costs. Okay. Right. I'll bite. And, and, and I really don't like us, or anybody, impugning what another board is going to do or say because they haven't been asked. Right. And I think we need to give them the opportunity to actually do or say yeah. whatever it, it is that they're going to do or say right. without us you know, saying, oh, well, we can't Right, do but I'm trying to play chess. And well, so then after they do the predictable thing they're going to do, should we be, are we better served strategically nuancing that thing, feathering it in, to acknowledge some things that they do. If you say the TA should take over uh, Title V, or the assessor should take over Title V authority, they'll die on that hill. They will right. totally die on that hill. And they'll point to tons of case law that will defend them. That's so that would be a silly thing to do. It would be a waste of time. So it's better, like we're doing right now, right? We're saying, gee, guys. You mean take over Title the Staffing? Uh, of no, doing. No, but granting. that's not what we're talking about. No, but, but you are, about. but you're picking and choosing. I'm he's saying he's they have a mandate. A they have a mandate from the state about what they do in their, you know, and maybe and planning board. I mean, they all the boards have their things, and so. But we're talking about taking on attempting to change that. I understand. That. I'm not sure. <laughs> I am trying. I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> if you said schools, why is schools not under us? Like, we want the schools. That will be a silly fight. It'll be a silly fight because the schools will never, the mass, and what is it, DESE will not allow it. I mean, there's right. so much against us, no matter what we say. So we're better off saying, as we do, gee, we acknowledge that schools is independent. Now how can we work together? But I thought there was that? general, the, there had been some discussions in that there was support in different areas for some form of this. Maybe not in all areas, but that right. people aren't rec recoiling in terror from all areas about this. No, and no that there they're is not, but I think there are a couple fact, instances. Yeah. Yeah. Fact, so we need we to had those Friday morning things, yeah. the Board of Health was on board with a central and a, a um, evaluation of central. I'm with you, I just so said they, that. All, okay, the, so all the care and feeding of the employees should go into town hall standards that is administered yes. by the TA. I but think that's hiring and firing, but those if you are red flags. Staffing. So if you keep staffing in the different things, then you, you Below give up. Below the level of the top, I would say that would be a TA function. Well, that's what we're... That Below what we're, the level of the top. In other words, health agent, assistant health agent, assistant town planner. And every assistant is... Everything, the, every staff see, position I, under that. I, I think what we're trying to get at, though, is that we need management throughout because you know okay. the the staff those high okay. level staff are only reporting to maybe the chairs of those organizations who are not in a you know okay. right. you know I'm going to I'm going to give up I got it I, I, let's go for it I, so the question here is not whether the question that you posed is what select board check should we have like so let's go back to less controversial areas police chief fire chief town clerk this is this is check on the no. TA. So if we right. were to authorize the TA to go to to say, okay, TA, you're now in charge of all these departments, and the the TA does something that we think is really out of line. Yep. Um, or those you departments. You can always fire the TA. I mean, no, but that's a pretty that. dra dramatic. No, but, that, but you didn't. I don't think you found it right. It's and more I'm, like <laughs> it's more like if, and I hope he doesn't. But if Chief Amendola took another position, you know, like what happened to um, uh, Chief Fisher, yeah. right? He took a different job, he moved. Are we gonna say, Ryan, go hire and then let us know who you hire, or are we gonna say, That's what bring we're discussing right now. I know, the, the, that's the, what we said. The high, well, we're okay. discussing at what level we wanna have involvement. That's exactly right. But Kate was bringing up, the other, the opposite of that is, if we do delegate it to the town administrator, and is there a check that's an easier check to say, hey, you've appointed, you, you've hired this person, but we want to, 
you know, vote them down. But again, I, that's a question I haven't asked the TA, and maybe you could chime well, I in. Was, but I think I was, part of the. You don't the, vote them down. You have to vote them up. You can't. Right. He exactly. would have no authority. If he would have, we no, had veto, he would have no authority. That's why, that's why I think it's get, hard. Right. You so I think you have to pick those assignments where we say, you know what, you can hire everybody else, but these ones you have to bring to Okay, so what right. would you recommend of those ones? Police, fire, and TC. Police, fire, and? Town clerk. Only because and we're just clerk. emerging from, uh, we're in a transition. I don't think we yeah. can say, you know, I okay. think it should still be. Barney, Barney had said that as well. Yeah. Scott, what do you think of that? Yeah, it makes sense. I'm, you know, I'm, I see police and fire more than town clerk. I wasn't, I'm not opposed to that, but I wasn't clear on why the town clerk was being added to that list. Just because we emerged from an elected, it was right. semi-controversial even to even right. take it out of election. If we go the next step and say, because mm -hmm. we said, by the way, the select board is kind of the firewall here. If we say, oh, no, we were only kidding. Right. I don't think that would go over that right. personally. But Scott raises a good point, though. I mean, the, the town clerk, I don't know. Read the, go to part two of this discussion and read the uh, position <laughs> description. There's a lot of stuff in there. I was going to use a different word. Okay. Let's but any, that. any staff that worked beneath the town. Sure, opinion. sure. These are, we're only talking three employees in the town, the, the police, fire, and the town clerk we would would be hires of the select board, meaning that the town administrator couldn't just say, okay, I'm hiring this person yeah. and do it. And I think that I think that's reasonable. But you have a good point about why town clerk. I mean, I could see police and fire being very high profile positions that are interacting with the public and that there's huge responsibility that we want to. Right. But in this you know, era, I would say, in this era of contested elections, elections. Yeah. that responsibility of the town clerk is pretty significant and the reasons why those who did not want it to not be who were against removing the elected right. position were citing the independence right. and I think we want to do everything we can to allow the TA to not get embroiled in a possible conflict of interest even of his or her own make you know right. inadvertently right okay I, I think that I, I'm in agreement with that. So you want to, uh, as a board, do we think that that's kind of what we're shaking out? That we'd we'd want to delegate hiring and firing of all the employees, except those three would be specific hires, and I guess firing fires, right? Or yes. I, I, my my only question in this is when you get into something like the police department, where the employees are. It's a specialized profession. Is it feels a little weird that the, the TA has the hiring and firing? But they're doing it now. What what how does it work it now? Okay. He does yeah. it and okay. they come to us with the thing. All we're okay, doing is enough. going most of the time, unless yeah. there's yeah. something. So he's doing it. Yeah. Well, again, the, 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 I think what what I would want to hold the TA accountable to is, you know, your direct reports are these department heads or these these different things. You need to be delegating to them, you know, and, and, and if, 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 you're, if you're getting too into the weeds there, you're not doing your job. But that's our, you know, that's our overall oversight. I mean, it's like any other thing that we do, right? But again, the, the, my intent is not to create someone that's now taking control over everything. And, and it's someone who can now, when, when we identify efficiencies or staffing issues, you can actually I mean, implement that's, that's them. That's our hiring decision. It's more... It's every organization in the world. When the board of directors hires a CEO, yeah. they give that CEO a certain line of authority, yeah. and they hire that CEO, one hopes, because they have confidence that yeah. that person will do a good job. Yeah. If they don't do a good job, they have the authority to broom. That's what I'm saying. That's what he's which saying. Which we still have. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Right. And that's it, kind of what I want to get to, right. and personally. That's my view of it. Right. Is, and, you know. and we need to uh, we need to create a position that we qualified applicants and strong applicants will actually want in this town. Part of it, too, is making sure, when, you know, when the next town administrator is needed, we have a job that is actually appealing to people that want to, is defined and has the span so of control. So are you, are you advocating for actually having no remove select board oversight from even the chiefs? What, what do you mean? No. Okay. From even the chiefs? 
Well, no. Why? Not I'm not, not understanding your no. line of reasoning. I think he's on board with the three. Yeah. Are, are you not? What? what no. What, police, what, fire. Police, fire. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you're so, fine. So, okay, it's fine. so, so if we move on, on. Um, we decided on checks on power. It doesn't make sense to have you know a in kind of a a way that you know we can easily unwind that or not. The you know, three-fifths vote or something, because the problem again is that the hiring process, in particular, mm -hmm. if the TA doesn't have the authority and then has to come to us and say, yeah, "Well, I got it," you know, they could vote it down, and then no. and we're back to where we started. It's so, public too. We don't want that. Okay. So once once we're given, okay. So then the last part of that is temporary appointments. Do we want to give definitely give the TA Absolutely. authority for definitely. all temporary? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, so I, I think that, and Barney had that as, um, but she said, but require the select board to approval before hiring temp police, fire, or town clerk. So maybe she didn't think that, but I, I think if I it's think a temporary it's one. Temporary, I think it's Okay, fine. so we're going to say yes on that. Okay, so moving on, HR authority. Absolutely. Management yes. of personnel policy. Yes. Absolutely. Also, caps, yes. For okay, hold on, the TA wants to. the four of you and Barney to know um, the town council is going to come back and say, so right now, you've delegated authority to hire police to me, right? And we, right. we do a process yeah. that I think you're comfortable with. Uh, you would have to overturn your strong chief law on the fire side. In order, fire week. For, in order for me to have authority to hire anyone fire. So right, strong chief means you hire the chief, the chief hires so everybody carve, else. Carve. Well, we're I, saying. I don't think you want to overturn that. It's just council's yeah. going to ask. Well, aren't we ruling by exception on those chiefs anyway? We've carved them out, right? Correct, but the fire chief has authority under well, he has the authority he has, or she, or whatever. But that's what we're talking about changing. So that's, the TA brings up a good point here. So on so fire, not on fire because it's a whole, but I guess it's, how is fire that different? How is that different like than police? It's like a school superintendent. Because you, you've passed in the past a strong fire chief law, but not strong police chief. It's just There is such thing as a strong police chief as well. So if you wanted to give the police chief the same level of authority as a TA, you would make him a strong chief. Not in, in action in law. Right. right, but we don't need. You did that in the past because volunteer, volunteer departments are different. So you wanted to retain that expertise and knowledge. Yeah, no, in the but fire we chief. don't. I mean, if we carve out police chief, you can still recruit. A, I mean, sorry, fire chief. You can still recruit a fire chief. Right. And just bring him to us, which is what we're saying. He's we talking would. about the people under the fire chief. No, he has his own authority. We can't mess with that. Okay. The okay, fire that's, chief. Okay, we, we don't. Even, we can be silent. So on that's that. another. Well, no, that's another one because we're. Council's just going to bring it up. I just wanted to let you know. Okay. Well, so. it doesn't mean that they can't come under the HR umbrella, right? It just means that. Well, you know. that's what we're talking about, David. No, no, no. no. Well, I want to be clear. Yeah. If they Brian wants to hire an uncalled firefighter, he hires one, right? If, no, Brian, it's Chuck, Brian, Brian. Brian, Chief Soros. If he yes, Chief Soros. If, but can we not put that person under our regular personnel policies when that person is wearing the Carlisle fire hat? We can. That's as long as the chief agrees. Okay. Okay. Is that a place we want to go? Yeah. I would do. say no. You would say no. I don't think you're ready to change the strong, strong chief law. We're not changing the strong chief. No, we we, we would, would be. To we, we would be. We would have to. Yeah, because so we would if take we have from him. a sexual harassment suit claim, let's say not suit, in the firehouse, what do we do? Sorry, go see Brian. What do we? What do you we tell do? the fire chief who's your direct appointment to deal with it? And that's it. No. If he he or she says no, you don't have. Okay, so we say Brian. Is there a policy in your firehouse about? You know, but and he says no. I don't have a policy. That's, right. We have no authority to. That that's one of the reasons that's that a, you'd want a strong TA. So that's not a, that's a better example is, we want all volunteer firefighters to be on this pay scale. The yep. chief doesn't have to listen to that if he's a strong chief. Right. Most of them would. But you're saying you want all the HR functions. Well, the the appointing authority is what gives you the authority to pay, mm. to to do yeah. benefits, etc. Mm. So the. There are exceptions. I, I think you could manage it by just managing the chief, but. Right. Well, I think it sounds like that's wordsmithing with council. I think we wait until we go do our next yeah. chief and I wonder if we could change it then. Okay. So fire department, the chief <laughs> in that will leave yes. as, retains the authority yes. for yes. hiring the fire department. Yes. HR function. Okay. So um, anything else? Uh, 
on that. Oh, I was no, wondering, okay. excuse me, um, and I'm not suggesting that we do, but you know, we also have a finance department, and are there any positions there that we want to maintain um, some hiring over, like the treasurer collector or the accountant? I'm just throwing it out there because we talked about all the other departments and we haven't talked about that. And, and you know, for that matter, COA. Um, well, none of you are getting down No, 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 I mean, so. if we're talking, we Don't have to talk no. about all we of them. We do, and I'm glad you brought it up. So let's talk <laughs> about it quickly and then I, move I'm on. I'm not suggesting no, we I, do, but I just want to make sure we talk talked about it. All right. yeah. I say no, and I, I mean, I think a lot of it just comes down to, if all this were to come to fruition, we would just need to manage the TA and make sure we're up to date right. with, and he has authority, but we know what's going on and, you know. So what is the, what is the check and balance for financial fraud if the treasure collector reports to the TA and we don't have a whole lot of oversight? Do we now? I don't know. I mean, well, we have technically we do because it's our budget, but and in point of fact, that won't we, change. It's still our budget. I mean, that's the question. That's like why we had that argument about audit committee. Like, at what point do we exercise our fiduciary responsibility independently of the people who are collecting the money, paying the bills, and all that jazz, right? Right. And that one, I would say, is a real is, but, but is something to talk about. That well, okay. that's well, kind of an yeah. investigative authority, and in who investigates the TA? You only investigate if you get a smoking gun. Well, you, a more robust process is an oversight authority that constantly monitors in such a way that we can stand tall and say, yes, we're confident that everything's on the up and up. Now, there is an independent auditor that comes in, so that's one check. I mean, I'm not looking for problems, but the things that I worry about organizationally, my own organization, and I would worry about here, are financial and HR matters that could result in legal action. Those are the things that well, you want to make sure you're keeping an eye on. You have some, you know, check and balance on that. That that does come later, and we kind of had a under under investigation powers. But it's one of the points, and Barney brought this up. But maybe town council has a, has a thought on that. Yeah, I mean, they they look we, at these. They help. You know, they yeah. could. They might. So I'll, yeah. they might I'll say this is this looks that. good, but you really should appoint the whatever town account. Right. Well, let's ask. I mean. Ryan, you're a finance guy. How can right now, if I challenge you, say how can you make me, how how can you give me confidence that Sandy and uh, Kelly are not cooking the books? So you passed a set of uh, comprehensive financial policies, and yeah. I provide you a quarterly report on whether or not you're meeting those standards that are then audited by. But who checks that? I mean, where do the numbers come from? The state and the third-party auditor. The state. And I think. One of the, and I'm biased, right? But one of the arguments for centralizing power a little bit, I'm not saying change the entire town, is there are certain employees that I don't have the authority over. The boards and committees do. And I would I would argue that the boards and committees have zero idea what's going yeah, on. You're, 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 you're trying to prove a positive with a negative. I, I, I understand all that. I'm saying. But you're asking me, like, how can you be confident in financial oversight? Right, but the answer is not because I'm more confident than the other guy. It's, well, you just it's answered the mechanism. There are yeah. multiple okay. mechanisms. So we have mechanisms. So I'm okay yeah. with that. Okay, so okay. we're going to move on. We're going to keep on target here if we can. Um, so to HR authority, management of personnel policies. We've all said yes. Yes. Okay. Um, cannot change personnel, can or cannot change personnel policies. Mechanisms like three-fifths vote of the select board is the default. Let the TA make the decision, and then the select board can change if we don't like it. I mean, that's... How do we, how do we know if it's made? I mean, we'd have yeah, to they be have to report it. Policies should be... I believe policies is a purview of, these board, of our boards. Policies should come to us for review. They can be suggested. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't just yeah. willy nilly change so the policy. Not, so policies not. come before the before the board. So yeah. all policies, like he does yeah. now. I, yeah. They, yeah. He does all the work. We just review it. I mean. Right. Exactly. And it's our job to review. Okay. So that's how the so personnel policies. So he can't just change policies. So we're right. we're in agreement on that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, this I mean, is why we're he, talking about he it. Does, Okay, who does not come under the HR umbrella? That's kind of, we've already kind of discussed yeah. that. Okay. Well, um, even some of the school personnel are coming under, aren't they, for uh, certain functions of HR? Do they have their own personnel no. manual, um, Aubrey? They do. Oh, yeah. Is it no. lined up with ours? 
we can review that. Yeah. We should. I mean, that's something I don't know. You want to buy that? I think that's departments working closely together. To yeah. Things. Well, the thing is, they don't have an HR department at the school. No, but they do and use. And they're using our function. Right. So. Um, right. It, that, which is another argument for the rest of the system, even the school, which statutorily doesn't have to, right. is it, it argues right. that the rest of the town should also be using our HR function and right. everybody that's should right. be no, the same umbrella. Right. And that's right. what we try to get. Which would be a good idea, I, mean, yeah. I think. Okay. okay, but we've said the fire department is one other that well, does not. Yeah. Okay, so we're, no, I'm just yeah, yeah. trying to be clear. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So we're fire department and school, um, but we have said that at this point we think that the library is another one that should, right? Yeah. Sure. It's fun. Okay. If, it's, if it's staff funded by the town budget. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just want to, okay. I mean, I think we should also just keep this as simple and consistent. I mean, there's a reason to not do it for fire that we can explain, but if we get into this thing where it's yeah, like right, this, right. but not this, Exceptions, people right. start yeah. looking at you like, yeah, right, right. But okay, that's okay. government too. I mean, everyone's exceptions yeah. for everything. Yeah, but I think lobbies for <laughs> simpler is better in this. <laughs> you uh, look at the tax code. That's why I right. Right. No. Exactly. To get up exactly. This exactly. Yeah, All right, but I like it, Scott. We're going to be consistent. We're going to be consistent. All right, so collective bargaining. Um, do we want the TA to be responsible for that? Do we want some level of oversight? What, do you, what are we talking about here, like in terms of contract police? negotiation? Well, which collective bargaining are extant here? Are you saying you wouldn't have it's police person and dispatch, on the right? Is that the only two, uh, Ryan? Dispatch, police. Yes, under your authority, yes. Right. So which mean, ones? Police, police and fire. And police and dispatch. Oh, police. So right now you're you're kind of lead negotiations like on dispatch, but you bring us the status and all that jazz, right? We vote it. So you've delegated running it to me, right? With people, but um, also we've dealt. Haven't we not delegated negotiation to you? With dispatch, we have. No, right? we meet. It's more the process you'd be delegating. So, am I in charge of the process or not? Is the TA in charge of the process or not? You always have to sign. Yeah, I mean, we have to sign the agreement, but it's kind of like the police chief. If, if we need a new police chief, as I understand what we do now and what we would continue to do, we'd say, Ryan, go run a search and bring us a name or two. Right. We have a collective bargaining agreement. Ryan, run the process, bring us the contract, and tell us what's right. going on. Right? And so if the bylaw is silent on it, I would come to you and say, here is my process for negotiating, and you would say yes or no. Right. If it was directive and say you run the process, then I would run the process. Well, it, directive would still, in my mind, say run the process, but we still have to sign the contract. Yeah. It would be like the chief. We, we let you run it, but at the end we have to approve it. So I don't care if you want to be silent or write it so down. It's just I, I think we would want to clarify and write okay. it and say that the TA is responsible but as you say, a check on that is that the only way it gets signed is it comes up. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. right. and, and right now we we meet, you know, in an executive session and go over that right. prior to it. So I assume right. okay. Yeah, I, I guess evaluations of all employees, um, yes, except yes. the ones we've excluded, which are the the school and the the fire department personnel. Well, are we we're allowed to, he's allowed to evaluate the fire, isn't he? Fire chief. Fire, fire chief. chief. Yeah. yeah, but the chief's okay. in charge of the, all of the okay. volunteer firefighters. Right, but we can, you can evaluate the chief. Yeah. Okay. Are they really volunteer if they get paid? They're on call. They're they're on call. Oh, they're on call. Okay. All right. All right. Um, firing, a oh, go ahead, Dave. One, but, okay, so the employees who are under collective bargaining at police and dispatch, do you eval them as well? No. Or they do comport with the evaluation process? Yes, both their contracts have it in it, but okay, all right, all right. Okay. so the contract doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So here's the, you tell fire chief, evaluate all your employees. Yep. If he doesn't. We have no recourse. Except to get rid of him. Right. But if you tell the police chief, he's got to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, fine. We're carving this out as an exception for now. The fire department. Well, I mean, again, it depends. You can also, I don't want to get into drafting. You can also right. require the police chief to use our process you can versus the, the separate. Oh, if we're you're use hiring this. a new chief, especially, or even, you know, what part is, of this is good management and yeah, working yeah. with people. So I, I guess. Rather than say evaluations, I would say evaluation process for all employees. Okay. 
My strong so recommendation the actual is to focus on the personnel policies that, right. that the, the chief executive executes the personnel policies and then write all the details in the personnel policy. Right. Yeah. So that's I a good idea. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so the last one in this is firing authority. And I know we talked, you said hiring and firing. But the question is on firing, um, do we want any kind of oversight of that, you know, some three fifths or anything at the end of no, I mean no, I, because I, because the, I know we want we're, the whole thing is to give the TA more authority and clear uh, not give him more necessarily but clarify the authority too. Right. But do we need a check on that or not? My concern is practical. So okay. say there's an employee, he terminates the employee. Then what? The employee comes to us and says, "I'm challenging the overturn, my yeah. being fired," and then we have to have a public meeting to take a vote yeah. and then what if you reinstate that employee now oh, that's bad, that yeah. the TA just fired and it could be a month later right like I just don't see how that works unless unless there's a mechanism with open meeting law I don't you know if there was a mechanism where you could say here's what I'm about to do and then we just but it's at what level I think if we carve out police chief fire chief and town clerk everybody under that can be we can do I'm trying to say out of this, but the, <laughs> the best way to handle this, from what I've seen in my survey of towns, not Carlisle, is that the town administrator is required to notify you if they hire or fire within a certain amount of time. Right. So really what you want to do, avoid, is not knowing. Right. right. So it's notification, but, so if, but. If the TA fires yeah. someone and they tell you you fired someone and it was a bad decision, then you can take action on the TA. Right. I agree with that. But what I'm saying is on those three positions more than informing us on those three positions, the two chiefs and the town clerk, you would have to, I guess, call executive session and tell us what you want to yeah. do. Correct. And can you, you can call executive session and have those discussions. I think it's a conforming yeah, because those are actually not his can, but you have to, to tell hire them. and fire. Right. So but well, you have to tell the individuals. Or, or Barney so had, a, had a comment saying, all other firings TA must review with the select board chair and vice chair before they're implemented, if no objections. All, all other? Well, she said that, but I'm saying that's a suggestion. The suggestion being, do you want to just have some check that is, but I, you've said all the, the board, you notify the policy is that you notify the board ahead of time, but uh, I don't know, know if I that's mean, cumbersome. Like, like we had this guy at worked for DPW and he comes to work and he says I'm not hauling brush or whatever he said right yeah luckily he, he walks off luckily he quit like does Ryan well he quit but does Ryan have to you know, turn over to you and I mean no, I, 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 I don't think I, I'm yeah. in agreement I don't yeah. think that that's reasonable yeah. but I'm right. I'm suggesting that do you have a mechanism where the only has to go to the the chair just so that someone's informed but then I guess it's I hard mean, to inform the board. I mean, honestly, the board. Let, okay. him run his, let him run his department. I think yep. with, with open meeting law and the timing of it, it's just, yeah. yeah. Just if you have a town administrator that's gone rogue, then you have to. <laughs> you got you bigger issues. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Management of town hall and town buildings, hours of day operation. Yes, yes, yes. 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 layout, physical, yes. 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 Create orgas, yes. departments, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Permanently delegated right. authorities. So real, Dog. Oh, real quick on that, all three of those are very reliant on appointing authority. So if you don't, that's right. You don't control the employee, then you can't control their hours, where they sit, or how they organize their department. That's well, right. you can control where they sit. You can control. Where they no, sit. you can't. Yes, you can control they, where they sit. That's correct. Okay. Well, I, yes and no. They may decide to not come in to work. That's different. But when they come, you sit in that seat. Oh, that's okay. The seat for you. Okay. The hours of operation is the only one that I kind of had because... Let's put it in. I, again, you're going to where you want to get to, right? Put it in. Let somebody fight it. That battle I'm happy to have. Meaning what? what what's your concern with the hours of My operation? My only concern... Okay. People show up, they need to talk to the uh, well, assessor. No, I... See, no? assuming. You know, just hold on. I I think that hours of operation could also be the you know, the public facing town clerk how when is the office going to be exactly open yeah. okay yeah. so the question is you know if is it four days a week is it three days a week and you're saying oh well, we're going to just let the town no. uh, town yeah. administrator yeah. decide that yeah. and and i just think 
I don't know. But if My we don't initial like the reaction decision, was that, we, yeah, is that that's a a public facing so you think that should be select political decision. type decision. Well, my initial reaction, and it's not to say I'm I'm yeah, opposed, okay. like totally opposed to it, but I think he, I give it consideration because, you know, it's kind of like I brought up the last time. And we'll get there. Like the signs on the the thing. Yeah. I mean, that's a political mm -hmm. statement, and just delegating that is is I'm, I think. I'm fine. You make a good argument. To, uh, the argument I would. You make a good argument, and another argument to support what you're saying is it gives Ryan air cover if he has to go to us and we have to weigh in on that. But the reason that we, I would support letting the TA do this is because we never do it. We just kind of, we, we duck every time that no, issue comes. No, but he'll comes. bring it up and he'll say, you know, we have people lining up here at 9 a.m. and nobody's around. Like, can I right. make the hours 9 a.m.? And we'll say sure, and then we sure. put our stamp. Sure, and on. then and then when we get enough feedback that people don't want it, we, we say we go to the TA. TA yeah. Hey, we got a problem here. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. We do and, that. and I think that that's reasonable. But okay. but All the right. check yeah. but the check on the power. I just I hate to get so far where you say well your only check is really to fire him or well you're not going to fire him. We're not going to fire him over his days. We, All right, but if he doesn't so do you, listen, do we on the first bullet? Do no, we I'm in say, agreement. I, I brought that of, only. No, 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 no. We're going to say yes to all those. Okay, I think. Okay, okay dog hearings. Yes. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Uh, cemetery. You're deeds. a newbie. You haven't had to sit. Cemetery <laughs> deeds. Yes. Yes. Okay. Signing warrants. Ah, now we get to a thing. Hmm. Isn't there MGL law in this? No. Yeah. So you you have that authority unless you delegate it. But we we can delegate it. We delegate it to a select board member. Right. I don't think we should take that away. I, I mean, it, I, it doesn't I really, take much time it takes either. No time. So as a as a point of, as, but yeah. why do we why why do we keep it? What do you feel like you're getting from well, that? Well, when I did it, I would sit with um, Pris, mm -hmm. and I'd look at the warrants, and I did it at schools too. Like, what's this? Like, you do like your own business. I did it. I signed it once. I asked questions too. Yeah, I was like, what is so this? So you go? do it and you learn, and and at least there's a sign. I mean, school board, I think everybody has to or sign it. Someplace everybody has to sign it. I don't know, it's stupid. But at least one designee from the board that's in charge of the money should be looking at the bills. We're not so big, we can't do that. Does it slow the process down? Does no. it create a problem? I'm asking, actually, Ryan. Yeah, that one of us has to come. Um, I don't have strong feelings on this. The towns are 50 50 on it. Yeah, okay. Okay, depending on the select board member. I, I, yeah, I would tend to keep it in because I do think it, at least it's some type of check. Just to check on yeah. it. All right, and then the last one is signs, where that was the only one where I continue to think that's such it's a political hot button now. But we've delegated it to the TA already to, in some respect. That ship but, has sailed. But what? That ship has sailed. I well, it has until it erupts into, you know, national news. Now that was for, for signs being stolen, but or flags being stolen. But but those are there are a lot of people, not a lot. There are people who are are not necessarily satisfied because they may be on an, a one side of a political idea and the other, and saying why should you know why should the TA and not the elected official get decide the airtime. Why? Why no. is that? So I think you're confusing policy and execution, though. Okay. Because um, all I am delegated to do is is to execute the policy you passed. Right. Yeah. This guy has a sign that comports with the size requirements, the date requirements, and the message is apolitical. He gets to bless the sign, right? And, you have and the. Or it's so it we, is a sign that is sponsored um, by, by a town, uh, the, a right. town entity, which in fact the flags were. Right, three town entities. Yeah. Well, so here's here's a question then. So you can have the we can delegate the authority, but we can but you still have to conform to the policy. Right. right. So that's true. of all these things. So we can change these, the policy. We can change right. the policy. Okay, I, I, then I'm fine with that. Okay. Yes. As long as we. But by the way, it's it. it's the same on cemetery deeds and dog hearings. Yeah. Right? There's a policy. So. Yeah, and we we can exercise, but we don't need to necessarily discuss no. and debate every. Right. Sign, as long right. as it, and we don't I, we don't I don't want to be in the business of making decisions around which signs are appropriate or not. Like, we yeah. should have a clear policy and... We, we, we've worked hard we at that. Yeah, we've worked so hard as long that. as there's a policy guiding the execution, then... Yeah. Right. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah. And we have... And it. If, if it's not working, we change the policy. Right. And exactly. we can still continue right. to do yeah. that. Yeah. 
I, the wheels are turning. It's only because I'm still hooked on the, and that's I'll, I'll have to work, talk to you all about changing policy. I'm, I'm, I, I still don't like, or I'm, I'm, I'm cautious about the the town employees deciding the signs or messaging that they want to put on there without a check by the select board or somebody that's elected about what they want to do. But, and I'll just tell you the the. Um, pride flags, you know, I knew about, I authorized, I supported, but there are people who don't. And I'm not defending that view, but I think that there's a, a valid reason why, you know, that those decisions shouldn't just be made by unelected town officials or unelected yeah. town employees, but should be made by okay. elected so officials. So you're of saying that we have aired too much on the delegation side on that now because right now he, he Ryan just informs us when there's been an approved sign right yeah. Yeah. correct so correct should and we claw I, that back that's, and go that's, back that's, that's, talking that's a policy, separate though? that's a policy and I'm getting a soft topic and I'm sorry but that was just something that that I have just I've thought about from a policy standpoint that I have I just like to have well, if, but public it, we were talking about bylaws so it sounds like that that needs to be a change in our policy in our policy, in our policy. to say we we're going back to the old days. You need to propose. No, well, no only no. for if the town, if if the school wants to put something on there, I I think, or or any town, if the firefighters want to do it, and we've all said, oh well, of course they can put whatever they want, but there may be some things that I'm that agreeing want with you. I'm saying, be, but the way around that is we have to then approve each sign. If no, the school decides, no, it's just for town employees. You said town departments. You, Kate said well, the town no, no. departments decided they wanted to do this. No, no, that's, no, no. We're getting oh, okay. Let's, we're getting. Let's, let's get. Let's go up a level. That was this a school is, committee in the CUHS. School, school committee. That wasn't stuff. Okay. okay. This is a we policy. Have, we have a rotary, and uh, can we go in the rotary or not? Yes, in the rotary. Okay. So, so yeah. I'm just, let me just give the example. So. We do have guidelines, size guidelines. It has to be a town department, like a school or a COHS or I don't know what is it, the poppy seed. You know, I mean all these things. But if the school decides it wants to have, we support Kamala Harris, and they want to put that in the rotary, no. we should have oversight and say maybe we shouldn't go that far. The, the or, or Donald Trump. Or, or Donald <laughs> Trump. He's I saying mean, the policy that, prohibits that's, that. It does now prohibit political signs. Yep. Political signs. Yeah. So the policy can carve out. So is categories well. Let's signs. go back to Travis's example. Is a what's that flag? Pride. Pride flag. Is a pride flag a political statement? No. In whose opinion? The town. The well, as long as a board. Now, what the town administrator just told me, which I was I'd forgotten, was the school committee voted to do that. So in my mind, that solves that because I think that that's a publicly elected board that decided that that would be They have the, no authority the, to tell us what to put in our rotary. Okay. They can vote whatever well, they want. So I think you're building an argument, and I'm not disagreeing, that signs should be approved by the select board. It takes no, a minute. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm talking <laughs> I'm about, I'm talking I'm about I think we need to revisit the policy. Okay, <laughs> well, we'll revisit that policy. And then we can decide based right. on how that goes where to put this one. Okay, okay. okay. all right. We're not going to solve this one tonight. All right, but signs. Okay. But I just, I'm not to beat it to okay, death. Okay, I'm but sorry. Ryan I'm running maybe made a decision, this. or the school did, that a pride flag was not a political statement. But in fact, it is a political statement. Ryan, right. I will say, and I'm going to talk about a lot of gray area. Certainly, exactly. he is—he mm -hmm. has been upfront on everything, and so there's I'm not. not listen, we're not, no complaints. I'm just saying not, we have a job to do as an elected body. But that's what I'm that saying. I'm job. saying that I think that a some board that's elected needs to have okay. the on a public-facing yep, thing have, have okay. a thing. Let's move on. Something. All right. Financial investigative powers, financial and HR, like ethics violations. Should they have? I would like to understand, and this is a question maybe for Aubrey. Aubrey, do you fill an ombudsman role where people can come to you outside the chain of command? And is there a process for that? Yeah, I mean, and we're building that, but yeah, I am that. that so role. if I'm 
you know, three levels down. And if I'm a DPW worker yep. and I have a complaint, I can go straight to you. I don't need to go through Jim, right? Well, it depends. Uh -huh. So you should be going to your department head if that makes Say sense. Say I'm not but comfortable. It's Maybe it's that, about him. Yeah, exactly. Then that's, uh -huh. it is where I come in. Okay. Yeah. Now we get to the thorny issue, which is number two on this thing, but it's all wrapped up. What if it's about Ryan? Right, and like I would have, I agree with the note of you know if you wanted me to investigate, then that would be. Do we have a line of authority direct to you, that's independent of Ryan? So we, we don't. She should tell you, and then you would go to counsel. Yes, yeah, sure. she should. Tell yeah. Us. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. I mean, I put in a little verbiage in what I sent around how this afternoon. Tell, how does she tell that us? suggested sure. that. Chair. In those cases, goes they to go the to she just goes chair. directly to council. And council tells. I think in those right. cases they should go to the chair. Okay. Yeah, so, so would that be in in a ATA by, uh, hiring or a contract or something like that that that's expl laid out that that's a role of the uh, of the assistant town administrator? Yeah. And that's how it would get done. Well, it would also be in a personnel policy. Correct. Okay. And because there's grievance uh, uh, yeah. uh, right. portion in there. Well, it could be a grievance. That's one thing. Like. This person's, you know, giving me crappy duties to do or whatever. But it also could be I've observed an ethical or financial violation and then right. I report it. And I right. don't want to report it through my it's department. So right. this is one of the I think I think this is a material weakness in the town's policy. So the the inability to investigate HR um, ethics, really ethics and financial violations, that has to rest somewhere. And I and I get the person who has that ultimate authority can also be part of that process and that needs to be checked. But with employees that are not under your under your appointment authority, I do not have the ability to investigate, nor do you. If somebody comes with a complaint in that realm to Aubrey or through Aubrey to us or whatever, you don't have that authority. No. And this is not just a Carlisle thing. In the three towns I've worked in, I've run into that yeah. problem as well. So I can say, hey, this is a serious thing, and they can tell me to, to go away. Yeah, stay in your lane. And I have done that, and town council told I me would, you don't have the authority. Well, so I that's a discussion to, with town council, but a good way to, can the, the town administrator bylaw nod to the ATA function as well? I guess it could, right? We could have a clause in here. Right? Well, if you had the, the other powers that we've discussed, then you would have that ability. Mm. If people are ultimately, re if you have the hiring, if you would have it de facto. The problem now is the way we're set up. If someone's in a different silo, you don't have that authority. Right. So if you said the treasurer collector is appointed by the select board, I started to investigate the treasurer collector, I'd have to go to you with that violation instead of acting. Right. That's okay. I mean, I'm okay with that. But there needs to be some ability. At a certain level. To investigate. Yeah. Right, but we could give that. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. If we get the other parts right, then yeah. that'll take care of this. So, yeah, I guess, I mean. So you can put that authority in town council as well. Yeah. But it's a little well, bit. I, but I'm still back to ombudsman. I mean, the, the function that I'm used to is, yes, Aubrey works for you, and you work for us. So that's that chain of command that exists. But generally, if you carve out that function for very specific things, the employee who is reporting or complaining can go to that, Aubrey in this case, with the confidence that that's being isolated out of the hierarchical and it'll be dealt with right up to the select board. If we decide to have you investigate rather than counsel, that could be kind of our decision. And we can have that policy, yeah. personnel right. policy, well, if, policy, but for people under his direction. Uh, well, we again, if we if we're being aspirational about the yeah. way we do it, we could say for everybody. Yeah. Why why call? So them? if we did all this other stuff, we would just need to update the personnel policy yeah, and reflect right. that. Yeah. But. So I mean, my view is that we should clarify the ombudsman role somewhere yeah. under the ATA, and then as I wrote in my markup, and uh, um, uh, Kate seems to agree, if it is actually about the TA, it should go right to the chair of the select board, and then figure out what to do. Again, I'm not talking about grievances here, though, or no, no, no. Treatment. I'm talking no, about, we're talking about serious harassment, yeah, yeah. ethics violations. Serious violations, violations right. Financial right. violations. Right, exactly. Those need, you have to be able to investigate. Someone does. Right. Yeah. 
Right. So how do, what's the consensus then on this? That, is there we one? Would, we would make a point to update the relevant personnel policy to define that. Is that right? Y yes. If it's not defined. Yeah. Well, I think. But that doesn't help you in the here now, it's certain. Here. But that's the other part of the equation. Barney put in. Uh, so the TA should have the power to investigate unless there's right. a conflict of interest, and then they yeah, yeah. to the ATA. Right. But for example, you wouldn't. This wouldn't apply. For if we, if we got all this done, it wouldn't apply to the uh, firefighters. For example, you wouldn't have the ability to investigate a firefighter. Yeah, you should. You should go in. I mean, depending on how how it's if done. It's serious. You, sh you should. Even like, if these should be. Even if we carve out the fire of everything, like there should be an investigative power. Yeah. yeah, that can over and that can span across where we don't have. Okay. I, that is my opinion, but I think you're. I agree. We should. That's a point. If I go counsel. to a board chair and they're like, I don't care. Yeah. Then what do I do? I can go. I guess I can go to the select board but, council. You know, but something. could we have a you person? You have to force that board. That we force them. Yeah, we force them. I mean, yeah, yeah. when you have serious violations, I don't care who we piss off, and I don't care if they want to sue us. We're going in. That's it. Yeah, but okay. it would be much better to have this done legislatively, and then it's not. We will try to do that. Yeah. But in the meantime, yeah. you know. That's a specific point. We should get counsel. Right. Like, how do we yeah. do this? Is yeah. the right way to and do And I'd this. like to know the specific reasons, conditions under which we can terminate the strong fire chief. I mean, if there was a pattern, again, Brian's a great guy, and I don't mean it to be about our current fire chief. Right. But if there was a pattern of sexual harassment, for example, and the chief was reluctant or ineffectual at changing it. Is that a reason that we can broom it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So yeah. we got a reason. Absolutely. Okay. We should know those reasons. We are running over, but I'm, I think yeah. it's important. We're almost done. Yeah. Budget powers can be limited to quote CTA role in budget budget process bylaw. I know Kate had asked a, about <laughs> that. Um, that was just bylaw. well. That would be getting if if the select board wants to move forward some type of process by law and I think the rationale for something like that and it could be just a policy but a policy obviously can be changed but it's something so that we understand as a town how the budget is supposed to move forward whereas it, I think it's nebulous now is that we have a finance committee bylaw where they present a budget to the town right but don't we want the TA doing that I don't Didn't know. we well the way the TA the, doing what it's this comes mostly from me so um, there should be, I think, I said this to the Finance Committee last night too, that whatever process you decide should be codified. It doesn't have to be right. if the TA's in it or not or whatever. Right. It just should be, this is how the budget is done in Carlisle. Yeah, and we should. We should That's a policy, but the overarching authority, the way I think Kate drafted or whoever did 334, the town administrator shall prepare and submit the annual operating right. budget. We haven't done that yet. No, 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 I know, but it relates to the question. Okay. In other words, we can deal with, I think, what I'm trying to say is the bylaw should be clear that we're giving the TA that authority, and then the process is the policy. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, so what's the role of the Finance Committee? Well, that's what they... Yeah. Well, that, that, the role of the, the Finance Committee, be if we policy. got a budget process bylaw, that role would be um, defined in that. So the, the process would be that the TA, you know, initiates, the, uh, you know, this or that, and then by such and such a date, you know, before the, or so many days before right. a thing goes to the Finance Committee and presents this and that, and the Finance Committee then does their hearings and yeah, yeah. whatever. But that's so, a, isn't that, that's a policy, not a, I think, yeah. we're not looking to say you're ultimate. in charge of the budget, you present the budget to town and, if, oh. yeah, okay. No. No. So this isn't so, really. This so is, if we had a policy that said you you would bring a budget to the finance committee, that would suffice. This doesn't. Well, it need just to lays be out a, the steps how, in the. It doesn't need to be a TA bylaw. Or, a I'm, policy I'm, I'm, bylaw. I'm asking. His or, role in the process might be. Well, no, we'd have a policy. We would have a policy that would define your role in the, in the timeline and the steps. So the anecdote I keep saying is, it took me six or so months to understand how Carlisle budgets, because. There's a lot of people who have different views on how Carlisle Carl budgets. It would be more transparent and easier for employees to assist in the budget process if it was clearly laid out. This is how the right. budget's done. Right. How that whatever the details are in that right. doesn't matter to me and staff. It's just that we know what our role is. Right. 
And then it doesn't matter if your boards change, or your committees change, right, or your right, staff right. changes. It's done that way. Could that yeah. be done as just a policy? That's sure. the question. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would think that we don't need to go into a TA bylaw. To, okay. So to you're deal. saying it would not be. But in we the should bylaw. we should put it on the list of things for FinCom to right. to start working on is. But then oh, okay. CTA so then you would be silent on the bylaw. Policy. Well, right okay. now it's sort of direct. Because I don't. You're right. I don't know what we're. We're just, he's got the, well, he would have a policy, uh, the TA coming the town in, has the ultimate TA. authority on the budget, right? Right. And that's not going but a new, But he, I think what, what Ryan was mentioning was just the process. Yeah. So if he's got to submit a budget to FinCom, let's codify right. that somewhere. Right. But the bylaw, we're not delegating. Then it sounds like we're not wanting to delegate as it's written here. And I realize we're not drafting at the moment. Right. This is more prescriptive. It's, it's not, right. right, and so right. that's why I'm taking it back a step. Are yeah. we are we interested in doing that? Where it sounds like we're not. We're, we're we just doing do a policy. policy. Okay, right. yeah. policy. So All right. Just that, change the word. It articulates the policy. roles. Yeah. On this, okay. Okay. Yes. Powers and budget powers and budget process policy. policy. All right. So that's that is word for word from the government okay. task force finding. Yeah. Okay. That the TA's role in the budget should be clear. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. It okay. doesn't say that the, the TA should have the budget. I think that'd be silly. No. And the, the, it, your role in the process should be clear, and the main milestones in the process should be defined. Yeah. Right. And we should review the governance um, report again yeah. because they did have some. Language about the FinCom. Uh, yeah, FinCom didn't much recall, like their language. So we should we should just review that for good reason. Sure that everything lines up. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. All right. Well, the last one I think is the other requirements. Um, TA to conduct regular meetings with department heads and report to the select board. Um, you know. It could be very prescriptive if we wanted. It could be silent. Seems I mean, it's a policy thing again. Like if we want to have a. Like, do we want to put a bylaw that says you must meet with us? You're right. It's for, it seems in stone if it's a bylaw. Right. I think and it's that, just a, it's really if there are key things we want to, we want to that? operate in a certain way. You can say submit a quarterly report or something like that. Well, but, on the other hand, um, if it's not in the bylaw, there could be department heads who refuse to re to right. go to the meeting, and so we want to require the the department heads wait, to wait, attend those meetings. Wait, no, because the department heads, if you're talking about daytime department heads, are all under, right. you know, the yeah, like review of the TA. So the right. you're not going to the meeting, you're not <laughs> doing like I don't your want job. To, to work today. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So I, I, I would tend to think that if we can, if we're committed <laughs> you know, on the meeting. I'm not sure that's people right. People need to meet with you if you had authority over them? Well, right now I assemble a monthly department head meeting. There are there are many that I can compel to come, and there are many that I cannot. But it, it, if That's the other things were passed, though, the would be the if, same. If, 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 if these other things come to pass, do you also need, if you had the authority to say, like, well, you, wouldn't. you don't come to the meeting, and we have a problem. So this sentence would not give me that authority. Well, Saying to hold department head meetings would not give me the authority to tell an employee that I don't oversee no, but if, to come. If, but we're saying if all that comes if to all, pass. If all that's oh, reporting yeah. to you. I, then, then you I don't, don't even need it. You wouldn't need it. it. You don't yeah. need it. All right, okay. so it's superfluous. So we, yeah, that's, I think we're, it's just, okay. I'm very glad we're not trying to get this in for a fall down. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is that's complicated. Why we're, that's why we're stepping back right, and we're right. doing no, this good. in the okay. logical steps. TA maintain an organizational chart. Again, that's a policy. Right. Um, yeah. Of how we would well, we would job description. How, right yeah, yeah. how we would like or things that the select board would like to see from the TA prepare and submit annual operating budget and capital no, budget that's a policy that. that's all back right to the budget yep right. okay right. so I think unless there's anything else Barney had said formalize the current practice that the TA report should include be included on every select board agenda I think that's another policy it's, it's a policy yeah. policy okay TA Okay. Okay, good. All right. So the next step is to clean this up so and ask what, council to well, yeah, what, help us. Yeah, what, what the next step is, we're, I'm going to take this and all of our kind of consensus and yeah. put it into a draft type bylaw, or at least write it up and then get it to the attorneys to maybe put it in a draft form, and also to have them get back to us on those types of things, what would need to happen legislatively or not based on what we want to right. see. And then from there, once we are in agreement that this is the type of bylaw we want to put forward, we need to go out and really 
do our advocacy and try and, you know. So remind me, because I remember we talked about writing a bylaw that hews to our own authority and getting that passed at whatever time meeting we do it, and separately then petitioning the MGL for the home rule changes we want. And then do again, it change the bylaw yeah, after it, the legislative. Change. But again, if let's the, let's talk about that. Happen. We're we're at the end of this. Let's talk about that question at the next one once we figure out what okay. we're. Well, what it we're matters doing. to how you inform council. That's I think I, I, I mean my my view is we don't want to split. It, especially we were talking about for the fall and spring. If we're, right. if we're looking at spring, you just go with one. Right. No, but you, can we vote a bylaw that? Can we vote a bylaw that? Um, Sorry. Um, can we vote a bylaw that exceeds our authority? We exceeds our authority? Exceeds. Exceeds. No, we can't. I no, thought. so you, I think you go, again, we probably need another session with council. We will. Before We're gonna, you yeah. get, send them off drafting. Because okay. I'm not clear. I can see that we can write this bylaw within our own swim lane. And but, but that's the whole conversation we had is, if you want to expand into the other areas, then you need to MGL. Right. You need to go to right. MGL. Right. They need to tell us what parts of this need the MGL. Right. Now and we, if there are parts that they're just like, you can't do that. Right. There's so no world. Now so we, we have an idea of where what we want. We know, yeah. Board. Okay. Yeah. And, right. we'll, and, we'll, the, and they'll tell us what's currently out of our yeah. authority. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Let's move on. Yep. All right. All right, so uh, we've done the town clerk hiring process. Yeah. Aubrey. All right. Oh, you've waited um, to the end. Yes, Boy, thank you. You, <laughs> you are. Uh, maybe I'll have to do. move this uh, yep. laptop to show it on the Zoom. That'd be great. Zoom. We, uh, we drove Ryan out of here. Yeah. He's <laughs> your, your newfound powers of leaving. Do you find a power cord? No. Do you want me to? I'll, I'll, I'll do it right now. Um, so, all right, take it away. Sure. So, as you know, um, we're going to start the hiring process for the permanent town clerk position. Um, being mindful that this is the first appointed town clerk uh, for the town, you know, we want to make sure that this is an involved process, right? It's a really important position, um, and so we want to make sure that there's input from um, various stakeholders. So. Uh, I'd like to make this, uh, you know, fairly formal process. Um, so after tonight, if we can get a job description ap approved, yeah. um, we can get that posted as soon as tomorrow, um, yeah. and then we could give a few weeks um, to gather um, applications, and then um, I, in the meantime, I'll put together an interview panel, okay. um, and that will consist of a couple select board mo members, two staff members two community members and myself. Um, so I'll, I'll also be um, reaching out for any interested community members for this Bernie already, panel. Um, volunteered. Yes, so that's, which is great. Um, and so then after that, uh, we'll, uh, I'll give some time for the panel to select candidates and schedule interviews. And then we'll uh, plan to have those interviews at the end of October and then have somebody to present to the select board for appointment of November 12th. Um, and so that uh, by the time that um, the election's wrapping up and everything's been submitted to the state, um, we'll be ready to ha start that person and maybe even have a little o overlap with the interim town clerk. And how are we between now and then in terms of there's a lot going on? Sure. So elections, or do we yeah, have the resources we'll we just, need? Yeah. So the interim will just stay until um, probably the dis beginning of December. Okay. Um, so that was the plan is to just get us through the election season. Okay. Um, and so uh, that that's where this timeline is coming from, and that and also um, just from speaking with other town clerks in the area of um, you know being mindful of of those who would be interested. Would, would be likely to stay right. um, in their town until this next election. election. Yeah. I see. And, and if they were willing to leave before that. That's not so good. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. So <laughs> definitely was uh, part so. of, you know, timing it in this manner. Okay. Great. Sounds great. 
Do we need a motion or anything? Are you? I like I liked your edits. Yeah. I don't know. So I yeah. tweaked. I don't know if you saw that. Yes. Um, yeah. I just thought organizationally should just read a little cleaner too, because uh, there's a lot of duties there. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So that's. Kind and of I, I'm not an expert on town clerk responsibilities, but I'm assuming this is fairly standard description. There's there's nothing in here that's. There's yes. nothing missing, there's nothing here that shouldn't be. Yeah, it's fairly comprehensive, it was reviewed. Um, it's by a little stand set, yeah, you know. What's that? All those physical requirements. Oh, yeah. Well, you gotta put that in, right? Yeah, the some ADA stuff, right? Yeah. So. I like some of your little Well, when we had though. reviewed our town administrator, um, the former town administrator description, they had to operate a fax machine. You know, so things do. They get still do have. Stuff. Yeah, it's government. Oh, yeah, we sure still they... have the facts, and the town clerk's office. I, I, I can probably guarantee you. Oh my the gosh, facts. you do? <laughs> I know we do for HR. It's like if you work in a medical office, right? Yeah. They still love their facts. There's a few oh things that still require it. It's so weird. It's very bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> and not little... easy. <laughs> um, okay. So I don't know. Um, do I? Do we need to have any sort of motion? Did you see the edits, David? Yes, I were, did. Are you? Were there any edits that? Nope. Do you like his edits, or do you prefer your version? No, I, there was not really anything. Okay. You know, I, it, it it cleans it up. Okay. So do we want to move? Um, okay. So. Do we need a motion or? We need a motion. You, no. go. you don't need a motion. No. No, go. Oh. I, I defer to the yeah, yeah, yeah. As amended. yeah so this the, the main thing we're looking for is confidence in this process so the yeah. only time besides the two people who are on this board that you will see the candidate is when the final candidate yeah. is selected is in front of you mm -hmm. so they talked about you retaining this appointing authority so we just want right. to make sure this appointment process meets yeah. this board standard and then Aubrey will run it you don't have to have an OML subcommittee yeah. right. if you do want to do that then we have to talk about a different structure yeah. I'm, I'm so you, you appoint the people on it totally. Aubrey does. Aubrey does. Okay, yeah. I do. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. I think then we're as a board we're satisfied. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, back to the TA report if there's anything further. Just get back to it. Thank you Aubrey for putting that together. Um, okay. We talked about the budget. You heard from the safety committee tonight. All right, so this came up. We we are eligible for a Complete Streets grant, $500,000 in Complete Streets money. Mm. So they are filed in October and in May. Um, in Just being transparent, in my zest to try and get stuff done, we did have a group that wanted to uh, finish the sidewalk. I can't remember the street, but toward, towards the center of town on Concord Road. Yeah. Um, Spencer? No, it's... Um, Palmer Way. Palmer, Palmer Way. Way, yes. Which I, which I do think would be a worthy candidate, et cetera, et cetera. That was the only time that a sidewalk had come in front of me, and I was with the engineers, and, and they were like, we, we can put something together. And I was like, hey, this would be a consideration. Anyways, in a moment of lucidness, I called Travis and said, hey, I think the select board might want to have some more, more input on this rather than, than me just deciding the sidewalk should get done based off some community input. So. I've attached the prioritization plan, the level three prioritization plan to this report. And it would be good if the select board could at some point soon review it and come up with, or you could have the safety committee review it or some somebody review it to come up with, is this still in priority or order? What would we like to get done if we had $500,000 um, so that we can take advantage of this, this grant while did, this- Sorry, I may, maybe I missed it. Where did this priority list come from? This is a town planning process that was done in 2018. Okay. By the planning board? Mm. I believe it was run by the planning board and um, Niche, your engineers. Okay, so there was, because I'm, like paving, it was, you looked at needs. And, mm -hmm. Well, and some of them are done already. Are they? Not a lot of this has been done. Oh, it's I mostly sidewalks. All sidewalks, yeah. Okay. ADA compliance. Okay. I thought the. So the, this was required to be a Complete Streets community. Complete Streets is... That's number three was done, I think, right? And yeah. maybe number two? Well, I thought number one, number two, number three. I mean... I so there, there are two different... I mean, there's, there's a safety issue, which I definitely think the newly 
energized safety committee should weigh in on. But then there's also this, I guess, philosophical thing about sidewalks and yep. how far we go with sidewalks. It's, it's a budget thing, too. Well, yeah. <laughs> and a political thing. Yeah. Well, and so who gets we, first? Did and if yeah. you want them at all. And if you want the what? If you want them at all. Yeah. Yeah, right, if you want them at all. I've been told a couple of times that Carlisle does not have sidewalks, they have pathways. That's yes. true. It's just an indication that you don't want. No, no, that was for ADA, I think. Right. Wasn't it? Mm -mm. Oh. No, I mean, it's more like can bikers, do bikers, can bikers bike around not having to share the road with cars? Can they right. have their own little, that's mostly it, right? right. Some walkers. I thought it was the, the ADA because of the compliance oh, with yeah, the yeah, dips yeah. and that we had to have that them as too. not paved because that way we ah, wouldn't have to. Is that right? Oh, I see. Okay. That's part of it, yeah. So how do you get at that, I guess? All part of You can't wait to buy some of those pathways. Was there a committee that did complete streets? How did we come up with all that? The planning board just did it all themselves? We used to have a safety committee. I Pedestrian and safety committee. They did. Safety so it's kind of like now the new board. I think they did it, and that was. We could give it. We could dump it in their lap. I guess. Right? They're gone. They're so no, no, no. The, 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 the just new, newly constituted safety. safety. The new safety committee. Yeah. yeah. This isn't really think, okay. safety. Mm -hmm. Some this of it is, is, and some isn't. Right. You're right. So does that mean everything will be safety first? How much Probably. sidewalk does five hundred thousand dollars get well, you? Why not? Not a lot. Eight, but like ten away. feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could you could spend it all on sidewalks, or you could do some of these things that are eight thousand feet. Right. Yeah, thousand feet. That's right. Well, sidewalks and it's not are even a safety thing. It's not even paved. Right. Well, that's an I'm saying that's you can easily suck up. Bath, well, whatever. I mean, yeah, this is a huge list. I know. Uh, why don't Brian threw it in front of us? Why don't we? I don't know. I think this is a good thing for our board to. I know we, we have to pick and choose. Maybe it's not. I mean, you guys can chime in. Well, could the people who but did it maybe present to us their thinking? Very long gone. They're, gone. They're, They're all gone. gone. The fi 500,000. Well, 2019? Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. This was years ago. Yeah, it's a, it's a, they have a to approve the project. Oh, I mean, most people in town are living there. Are certain projects that would get us the money and others wouldn't? Hold on, we got two. All right. So they're gone. I, yeah, I just, I just think when it comes to prioritization, you're okay. right. We could delegate it, but right. so then we, we'll okay. then we'll have to. Uh, but so we should take it and study it and come back with our questions, or what? So this Niche is presenting this to the safety committee, just the program in general, and this report on the October fourth. Right. So Niche invite us to that meeting. So you could either invite or Niche could give that same presentation to you at a future select board meeting. I mean, it's probably productive to just sit in on their meeting, right? Because then we hear their views too. Do we have to um, have an open meeting for that or can we just listen in? If you're not deliberating, you can just listen. I think All right, so why don't we just listen? You don't see, ask and questions? Then, no. Well, then we should have them come to us. Okay. Or we, could have a, come, well. or we could have a meeting. We could make that a, well, you're, yeah, you're in Barcelona. You're in Barcelona. Yeah, six hour time difference makes it hard for me. That's a Friday? They're really going to present this on a Friday? Sorry, October 2nd. Wednesday, October 2nd. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, yeah, I defer to... I won't others. be there. I won't well, then be, let's uh, not I'm, do it. I'm out. All right, so why don't, we, why don't we just schedule them for a meeting? All right. Um, Sarah and the ESC officially submitted the climate leader application to the Commonwealth. Yeah. All right. So that's complete. Was it accepted? Well... Takes a while. Uh, not yet. <laughs> well, weren't we one of the first? Yes. <laughs> Still, it takes time. All right. And I just wanted to show you this quick video. Oh, Carl, that's a beautiful place. Yeah, Are you showing? Look paving? at that new yeah, pavement. Yeah. New pavement. Oh well, I can. What's up? I live I'm down not driving. Curve. Jim Hall is driving while I'm doing this. <laughs> I, uh, I live down Curve Street, and it's it's a beauty now. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the uh, this year's paving program. The reason I'm bringing that up is Newport Construction has finalized this year's uh, road repair program. Uh, the only change order on it was Church Street needed a, a, a significant amount of additional pavement. A change order of 17000 on a $380,000 project is, is pretty good. Uh, we feel that Newport Construction is a good partner. Jim monitored this, so we feel like the project was successful. And the treatments were completed on Curve Street, Proctor Street, Prospect Street, River Road, Church Street, and School Street. Great. Greeno Barn is now completely gone, Yay. and the ground is level. 
Uh, all fill materials were approved by the conservation agent and salvage items were properly stored for future use. Um, Julie in particular, but the staff in general deserves a tremendous amount of uh, credit for the creativity and oversight of this project, as do all the town volunteers and advocates that have been working on this project for 10 years. So, yeah. of Nicely course, there done. are many that wish um, it could have been done differently or not, but I, I do believe that this is a good compromise outcome. Uh, Jeremy continues to, for no money to, to run the Cory Auditorium Lighting Project, and I would love to say that I have skills like that, but <laughs> he's got it, right? and I'm um, confident in the oversight, so is Stephen. Yeah. So that, that project continues to move on. Tree clearing has begun uh, for the dog park at Banta Davis, and I attached a timeline for you to see. Yeah. Okay, yep. yep. um, we're fin we finalized bids for the tree work and the grave restoration at Central Burying Ground. We still are soliciting one or two more quotes for the entrance stones and the Litchfield seat. However, the total budget project to do all of it is going to be slightly over, and the Historical Commission is going to uh, move the cemetery entrance stones to a, to a future ask of the CPC in order to make sure all the stones are corrected. This is a very cool project. I'll have a presentation for you on it. Once, once it gets going, but uh, essentially it is lifting all of the stones, making sure that they're they're clean, taking away any trees that threaten the history of the history of the cemetery, and then redoing the roof of the Litchfield seat. Chrissy O'Shea has been instrumental in that as a town volunteer. Building construction projects. The library building committee received five bids, and they will be reviewing it next week. Or I'm sorry, Thursday. The library building committee will be trying to select their OPM Thursday. Uh, police renovation. So we are still we're still in the notification and contract phase, but the your renovation committee has selected an OPM for the project. So I will be negotiating and bringing this back to the building committee for a final contract by the end of this month, and they should begin a document review, finalizing permits in October and November, and then bidding should happen in December. And uh, how long do we think the, in terms of getting a bet bids back? Uh, about a month. About a month. So that would be like end of January? Mm -hmm. Okay. At the latest. Okay. The fire station renovation. So now having gone through one and a half building committee, I'm rec uh, building committee OPM selections, I'm reprimand, recommending that the, um, and the chair can take this, but that the fire station renovation OPM review, bid review happen as standalone meeting. It takes about two hours to do it right if everybody does their due diligence to get a short list together. And the select board has retained this approving authority, so you are the selection committee for the fire station renovation OPM. Part of this is to get buy-in from all of us so that we're on board and we don't. Right. Um, so the question is, do we have a, an extra meeting? Is that, mm -hmm. that's right. So. Because we're here, do you want to schedule? Yeah, you want to look at your everyone take a look at their calendar? October second. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I'm, that sounds I'm good. Done from the twenty seventh. <laughs> that's the perfect. So week of the seventh. Cancel 7th. your trip. The week normal of meeting is the fifteenth. We have one the eighth and the twenty second. Okay, so the fifteenth. Week of the fifteenth. October. We're talking. About October fifteenth. Fifteenth. I mean, I, I can do that if everyone. You want to do it in the evening? Is, that is the TA yeah. available? Always. <laughs> well, 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 you know. We have a policy on that, don't we? The TA will always, always be available. Be available. <laughs> well, even when he's not. It's, um, <laughs> it's a two so hour meeting. 15, how long did you say? Uh, probably two hours. Okay. The other thought would be do you want to have a daytime meeting, or if does that not work? Not for two hours, I don't. Okay. Uh, I'm asking. Who knows? Okay. So I'm available. That's also the day after Columbus Day. Okay. It would so help me if it could be at 6.30 or later. Yeah. So we want to just do so 7. So 7 o'clock. 7 to 9? Sure. Okay. Let's schedule that. And uh, at what point do we have a better sense of the cost? You won't. You, so this is just criteria. This is um, qualifications. And, Only. and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm asking this question, so if we, I'm just putting the ARPA hat back on in terms of when we want to finalize that, want to be synced up with this timeline. So is that mid-October still an okay timeline to do whatever? 
clawbacks we need to do. So assuming it went very fast, the 15th you would shortlist, yep. the next meeting you would have your interviews yep. in public, so probably be at your regular meeting on the meeting following the 15th, 22nd. Okay. Then if you selected someone that night, it would probably take me a week or two until the next meeting to get you some type of proposal. Right. I just want so to make sure we're... Early November. Yeah. We're not caught with the... So while you have your calendars out, actually the um, planning board, I think, is planning to have an MBTA open house on the 16th of, of October with at 6 p.m. That's open already house on my being calendar. It's already on your calendar. Okay, so just good. And, and what's so, the open house entail? It's to, you know, let you know, let people know what MBTA community's law is, how we think we might be able to uh, comply with it in this town, and what the, you know, kind of impact would be on this town. It's going to be here at Town Hall? Yes. And what time? Six. Six. six I, I'll give you more detail. I'm already you know. pretty familiar with all right, I've approved, we have approved, per your policy, three rotary signs, one for the Carlisle Community Chorus, September 9th to the 23rd. This sign will also be at the transfer station. The community, um, one community, one goal sign will be in the rotary from September 15th to 28th, and the run for live sign will be in the rotary from September 2nd to September 16th. We've also tightened up what it means to be in the rotary, so there will be no more signs in the, um, and any that have happened have, have been by accident. So we're being very clear. In the circle itself, there is no signs. It is in the islands around it. What is one community, one goal? It is in the packet. Sounds below. <laughs> Two communities. <laughs> is that directed to me? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, it is logos. Kicks and Mighty Moose. It's a fundraiser. Is this for the kicks? Oh. Logos for kicks. Oh, kick, yeah, kicks. Yeah, kicks. kicks. And mighty okay. Moose. Yeah. yeah. Both those are big. Answer. Okay. Yeah, those are big uh, community. I read this. I actually have to say, I'll just say it's right. I, I've heard from Live, Live for Live or Live for Live, whatever, you know, for years I've heard of it, but I, to actually get the note from Jody Marshan was pretty moving. I don't know if you guys read that. She said, money raised is helping victims of domestic violence to pre prevent the tragedy that caused a bullet to enter my head, as well as killing my child, Olivia Marshall. Uh, where, where did you read that? It was that? in the application. It was in the application. Oh, it was in the application. Oh, from the actual lady. Kind of moving. For the, oh, oh, the yeah. R-Lift. Yes, OK. Yeah. So, All, just right. All right, that. we're almost okay. done here. A yeah. um, couple up. discussion points coming up. Capital planning, as we talked about in the financial forecast as well, which is updating the operating budget model based off some assumptions and projections. All right, staff recognition. So Martha uh, sent this to me, that summer reading participation went up 20% this year. Some numbers are here in the, yeah. in the report great. itself. Yeah. Uh, five library staff members also managed to complete bingo blackouts, which requires reading 16 <laughs> books. Uh, and Gretchen also joined in on this because that's what she does. Uh, also from Martha, all the library staff deserve recognition for their work in the summer reading program, but Jen especially f is responsible for success, including working together with Holly and Miriam on joint programming. Mm -hmm. So good, good, uh, good story for multiple departments. Yes. Some dates, I will remind you I'm in Pittsburgh. Woo. Scholarship, September 21st to 25th. And the agenda, which we'll be reviewing tomorrow. The, the agenda is one thing I did want to ask about, because I know I'll review it tomorrow, too. But um, mm -hmm. the COAHS, we're, we're having a big discussion about, you know, kind of the their what their um, services are and the, the um, they want to talk about a community center with us, but I think we really want to focus on understanding what they do and what they want to offer. As part of that, um, I was wondering if we combined not that meeting, but something in with an offsite in the Benfield property. Mm. Um, sure. But I don't know if that's going to fit, but I, I, 
going to think about it and talk about it tomorrow with the TA. A field trip like we did with A Bug field Hunt. trip because the, the Benfield it's property idea, is something yeah. and it's it it kind of may dovetail in with the Council on Aging as well. More the more the afford, affordable housing. Could be that part of it too. Oh no, what's the one you're on? Where you used to be on? What, affordable housing? The one we that nobody wants to be the one that nobody wants to be housing yes. trust housing, housing trust. trust housing trust yes <laughs> yes i and i really still need another member so we didn't even get a quorum yesterday but um yeah the uh, benfield um has a lot of community areas and yeah. built in they were that's a good idea to visit it okay. doesn't i don't know if it has to be time but this well I, I was thinking about because then that's in our goals for the year yep. is to really focus on that building as well because yep. we need to figure yep. out what. I agree. what yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. I actually have on my list to ask Ryan where we are with the key fobs in there if he knows. But oh, he started, could. started today. At Benfield? Oh, key fobs. No, that's yeah. the next Pole product petition. after we do here. Is this poll petition P O L L or P O L E? Uh, an actual poll. P O L E. Poll. Yes. You know, telephone poll. -E. Oh, a telephone <laughs> poll. I'm like, but the poll yeah. petition. I thought not everything's elections. I'm not sure I'm not Bedford with the poll capping. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering what that was. I should ask. You, what, the poll oh, capping? capping? Yeah. Oh, they, they, they Bedford, they got, someone climbs they up the pole and... Well, what first they, they grease it. They, oh, they grease it. Oh, it's you a have contest? to get up there and take the cap off. Oh, it's a contest. Thing. It's a contest, yeah. Well, no, one person does it. It's not greased. It's not... Well, that we should ask. I don't know. No, someone just climbs up the pole and puts the. It's on Bedford Day. On May oh, Day. I thought you know, it was. They a put a flag in there or something. Yeah, like a hat or something. I can't remember. That's I used to live in hat. Bedford, so I used to go to it every That's year. Yeah. yeah. So I do pole. have one more. Um, so there has been a group that would like to do, to dedicate a couple bushes in the new native garden to um, our last two uh, town clerks who have now passed. Okay. And add a memorial plaque. So, so I have okay. a, I have approved that, but I, I do, I do want to make sure the select board is okay with that. Yeah. The only reason you wouldn't be is, you know, you don't want a proliferation of plaques everywhere, and you want to make sure they're special. But this one has a lot of community support. So, um, if there are no objections, then I'm sure you'll be invited to some type of dedication. Okay. How yeah. large is the plaque? Uh, very. I, I mean, I could bring one what is to it? the next meeting. Is it five feet by six feet? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm the just way Tell Nathan I want our plaque yeah. back because uh, that was a farewell plaque for his leaving service, the town service. And oh. since he's coming back, I want the plaque you back. You've got to repo the plaque. <laughs> well, we're going to scratch it out and add one more thing that he's done. I will not do that. <laughs> okay. Um, I will take a motion to adjourn. Well, Oh, he's on reports. Oh, he's on reports. Well, and, well and, 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 we have the warrants, but they're they're being. I have a, yes, I have go an ahead. item though. So, um, I'm attending the the school committee meeting tomorrow, mm -hmm. and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly run down our kind of annual goals just to give them some context for what we're looking at. And we're also going to start the discussion about Highland, um, okay. and they just want to confirm that. Um, and my understanding is that we're asking them to evaluate and, you know, not do a study or anything, but think about right. different potential uses right. uh, for Highland or that area that, that they would be amenable to, with the goal of the deliverable being something like that to us that the, we could then push further if, if there's interest. But we're not looking for them to execute the actual study or design or anything like that. Is that, right. is that correct? Yeah, that's you. kind of in my keeping, yeah, yeah. what yeah. I thought. And then um, the other piece is they want to begin uh, contract negotiations and want to start a meeting on that. And so um, they were asking if I wanted to be on that negotiating committee. I'm willing to do it, but I wanted to check with the select board and see if you're amenable to that or if someone else wanted to. I think you'd be good. You'd be good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nope. Yep, that's fine. I'd be so. happy to talk to you about it beforehand since yes. it was on the last one. I would like to give you some and background. I was on the ones before that. <laughs> No, that's that's great. So I'll I'll meet with them tomorrow. We'll start the discussion, um, yeah. and then if anything comes up, I'll I'll keep okay, the select board in the loop. Good. All right. Community input. There are One. Th two people One online. One's a reporter. One's a reporter. <laughs> any 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 community input? Last chance romance. All right. Well, then I given that I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, okay. voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're All done. Right, you guys. Done for the night. Done for the night.